ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, kids of all ages, cats and dogs, and everything in between. Welcome to the open house pizza party with Slow Rise and Friends. It's me, it's Unc Just. Justin Clark Dre, the pizza frequency. I'm vibrating at that pizza frequency right here. And that is what brings us all here together today to wax dough on things like pizza dough and prepare dough and all those things in between. Welcome, 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 guys. We have an excellent open house today. I like to say the proof is in the pudding, but the truth is in the pie. And today we're, um, we got three different people that are going to be on with us today. So I'm very excited. We're going to be uh, taking the first half an hour. Noel and I are going to be talking about what we have been doing, what the game plan, I like to say the old GP, what the GP might be. That's that game plan. Uh, what's coming up? Uh, we've been doing a lot of Zoom classes for a while now. It seems like forever and a day, but hey, I'm not getting into the politics of pepperoni and pineapple today. Today, we're talking about things like pizza parties and bringing people together because because as I say, and I, as I have said before, pizza is more than just feeding your stomach. It is nurturing your soul. It's made to be shared. So today, let's talk pizza. Let's, let's wax phyllo dough. Let's talk about the GP that's coming ahead. And uh, let's, let's to all tomorrow's pizza parties, guys. Just as long as we can break bread with people that we give a ship about, I'm A-OK -okay on that. So, guys, what we're going to do today, we've got Kelly Bone. Kelly Bone is the vegan pizza. This is, she's the vegan pizza queen. So we're going to spend a little time talking to KBZ, Kelly Bone, about uh, vegan pie and all the things that come in, in the in-between. So I'm really excited about that. I'm not vegan, but hey, if that's, if that's what uh, floats your boat, I say let's get that boat on the show. And then we're going to have Attilio uh, Gorino, uh, who is, he's just saying no to... Uh, no to deep flour. He says no to flour. Uh, now, I don't know who's on here. This is a free webinar, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we try to keep it PG. So no to beep flour. Um, and I think that that's great uh, because he's, uh, he's from Ava's Kitchen and Bar, and Noel's worked with him a few times. But the idea is, I, I think, and, and we'll wax on this, but it, it's a focus on ingredients, guys. You know, we're going to talk about that ingredients matter and uh, getting to know the flour, getting to know what resources you have around you, the farm to table idea. But like you can, you can do that even with the flowers that you've got. And also I like encouraging experimentation. Everybody calm down. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about with your flowers, you know, uh, get the technique down. I mean, we say often a recipe does not a pizza pie make. However, the technique and the recipe and, and fiddling around with that recipe, maybe a little bit of this flour, maybe a little bit of that flour, the quality uh, being up high is always going to lend to a better pizza product. And like we like to say, consistency is key king or queen, depending on, you know, your outlook on life. And then uh, we were going to be dialing in your pop-up pizzeria. I know uh, this is the age that we are still in the Corondone, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and pop-ups have become a wonderful thing with the advent of the rock boxes and the unis. I've got an uni. I really loved it. Um, but uh, the, the advent of the pizza pop-up quality ingredients, uh, being able to do it without, uh, you don't need a whole, you know, kitchen and the, the, the pizza master, although pizza masters are nice, but you can bring uh, bread and uh, pizza to people and really, like I said, feed their souls. And this is with Inez Glazier, one of my friends and cohorts within the Venice pizza community. So, um, so I'm very excited to get this party on. So Lupa Kata, yes. This is, I'm very excited to have you here. I know you've been doing a lot of uh, pizza kits. So I want to talk about that and kind of uh, getting into what the what is with the Corona Dome and how, how everybody's making it work. So guys, I know that you're probably thinking, yo, Justin, we'd really like to keep you talking. We see that you, you got your wish you were beer shirt, sleeveless, everybody. You know, today is, it is the webinar. This is Pizza and Friends. Ladies and gentlemen, Justin Clark Dre, the pizza frequency to, to, uh, to be the contrast to Noel, Mr. Slow Rise himself, who I'm going to bring on right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Noel Slow Rise Pizza Brown Down. Come on over and see us sometime, Noel. Blue Bell of Pizza in this, guys. Blue Bell of Pizza. Justin. 
Hello. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. It's Saturday. It's, it's October. Happy October. Can you believe it? October 3. So it's, it's, it's what? 10 32020. That's 10 32020. It's been a long time coming. <laughs> it has, right? <laughs> it seems like it. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, thank you. Thank you're you. welcome. I, you're not supposed to. Good. You're doing good. Come on. No, I thought. <laughs> doing well. Well, thank doing you. Well, I'm doing fine. No. My my coffee on ice today. I know you guys are thinking it's Justin drinking wine. No, it's it's coffee. It's not soda. I don't drink soda anymore. Good. Good. <laughs> the best people don't. I drink it like twice a year. It's so delicious. Soda? What, what, uh, do you, are you of the, the Coca-Cola? Or are you a Pepsi? How, hell yeah. Don't get on. Justin, we could go on and on about Dr. Pepper and Tab, but let's not. Let's not. Uh, what, about, um, uh, what about RC, Royal Crown? You, ever, you, you know get... what? On tap only. That's my thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, there we go. We need a pizza place with Royal Crown on tap. Uh, no, when I had a nightclub, we, we served R RC Cola and nobody knew. Oh, it's man. about half the price and it tastes delicious. You just have to, you, ha you have to just get it right. I had a guy who got it right. Man, we used to have, you know, I'm, I'm, you know I grew up in Virginia and my, my grandparents were from uh, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Lake Erie Perch, and um, you know we always used to have RC Cola and uh, from the, and Moon Pies as snacks. It was great, delicious, delicious. Justin, let's have another free Zoom webinar on our views of, of soda pop, like I some love people it. call it, but not today. Not today. We got, we, we got to move. We got to go. There's, yeah, yeah, I see there's over thirty people. I want to I want to start talking to them and. Uh, Will you explain to people how we're going to structure this thing? Because I want them to start asking questions. I want to get some questions fired up. So when we start bringing on our guests at 1030, uh, we're, we got as many of the questions out of the way. And I hopefully there's some people that have some great questions for us. Great. So, guys, what we did last time is if you do have any questions, shoot them to us in the Q&A. Uh, the chat is available. However, we encourage you guys to kind of chat back and forth. The questions in there won't get priority by any means. But this is a... Uh, you know what I, I, I joke about pizza frequency and resonating at that stuff but this is this is a forum for uh, like-minded people that are kind of pizza geeks and stuff like that so if somebody does ask a question feel free to help out your your, your fellow pizza person in in the chat guys if you have an answer or you have some insight into bake temps or cooking schedules or recipe percentages or any of that stuff that you might be looking for uh, go ahead and you know Feel free to ask that in the chat. However, if you do have a specific question, uh, please, uh, you can hit me in the q and I'm going to be here. I'll be pitching questions the whole time uh, throughout all of our three uh, friends that are joining us for this webinar. So, um, so don't, feel, don't, don't, don't hesitate. Just go ahead and hit me with some questions. No, uh, I'd like to start things off because we don't have any questions in the Q&A just yet. What is our game plan? What are we doing? What is happening with our little, uh, the little slow rise pizza frequency jam happening here? What's going on? What's the next? Well, I feel like we're, we just launched the 2.0 version of our website. So we're uh -huh. beta testing that right now. So all of the people who have taken our live uh, Zoom classes, got an email. We spammed them in some cases. Uh, and uh, everybody got discounts for the on-demand classes. So if you took a class, uh, any class in the last four or five months, you got 75% off that class on demand nice. and 25% off other classes. So that's a good thing. A lot of people are taking the on-demands, which I'm, I'm happy about because the biggest problem with our live classes was that so many people that follow us are not in our time zone. So uh, I look at the stats on my Instagram and 40% to 45% of the people are international. Right. Well, I remember we had some people that we were doing that it was like 3 a.m. where they were in, uh, you know, and we were like, holy moly. Australia, Japan, Middle East. It was crazy, right? Right. Yeah. But it just goes to show, you know, I mean, we joke about it, but people are passionate about this stuff. You absolutely. know, and I and I, I encourage that and I applaud it. Absolutely. So, uh, Dan Caps has got a quick question here. He's asking about, he's waiting for his Coda 16, the Uni. Um, we love those products. What, uh, 
I think the 16 is an improvement on the 12, whereas the 12 just had one side of the flame. The uh, 16 actually has an L-shaped flame. So when you're doing the dance with that pizza, because you know, when you're, you're cooking that high, you need no sugar in your dough, and you got to keep the dancing or you're going to brown that, uh, brown that uh, the cornichoni pretty quick. Um, has anybody worked with a Weber kettle pizza on charcoal the weber kettle pizza on charcoal thanks hey danny one thing that i like to do when i'm using um this is just anytime i use a grill uh i literally try my technique is to uh i put two pieces of parchment i put the dough in between i use oil and i, I spread it as thin as possible i peel it back and i literally slam it down onto the grill peel up that last one and let that dough rise up a little bit flip it so the bottom is now the top because the, the problem is getting a good cook open over an open flame that uh, is even before burning it. And it's just light on the toppings, just light on the toppings. And I have done those on both charcoal grills, very low flame because that stuff will burn. It gets pretty hot and also propane grills. But I like that technique of the parchment, slamming it, pulling it, uh, flipping it, and then light topping on that. Noel, you have anything on that? Yeah, so I, I haven't used charcoal. Uh, actually, I have used charcoal. Um, I've also used wood. Uh, I've also used gas. And so here's what I like to do. If, if the grill is big enough, uh, I slide my dough uh, untopped uh, onto the side of the grill where the fire is, right? Close it up, and it doesn't take long for it to start, bubbles to start rising on the top, and the grill marks start happening on the bottom. I would say two minutes and definitely before it, it it actually burns. I take it and turn it over and put it on the cool side of the grill. So there's no, yeah. And then what I do is I top it, right? And close the thing and it will hopefully cook the entirety of the way through. Uh, and, and not from the bottom, but from the top. And so you get, the, you get a well-cooked pizza, right? It's, there's a lot of ways to do it, but I've tried to do it a bunch of ways that didn't work. Uh, and that's that's the that's the best results I've had. Here's the other way that I'll do it. I'll take uh, that first side with an open flame, and the second side with a preheated pizza stone or 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 sheet pan, and I'll do the flip, and I'll finish it on the stone or the pan. That also works great. The stone oh. is the best. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, uh, Willie's saying he he's got a new uh, he's got an outdoor gas grill, and uh, and the top is finishing faster than the bottom. It's pretty interesting, and it has a stone bottom. Uh, you, you know, maybe, uh, will maybe you're just not letting it preheat long enough because usually those stones will, I mean, if you're kicking 550 on your grill, usually it's the other way around. Now, yeah. uh, worth, worth trying a steel on top, try a steel. I like, I mean, here's the deal. I like cooking with a steel. No likes cooking with a stone. So it's going to be, once again, the subjective nature of basically what your pizza equation is. And I talk about that. My favorite type of pizza might not be your favorite type of pizza. So the way that I'm preparing my dough and then finishing and cooking my pizza, it might not necessarily be the way that you like to cook. And that that's represented between like Noel and I, I like the baking steels. Noel's likes a, like a California pizza stones. And he also wants to know, are we thinking about pre-recorded class bundles? So, yeah, uh, are we thinking about them? We're thinking about them. Right, right now, what we're doing is uh, discounts for people who have taken uh, the live classes. And then, yeah, probably in a, in a, in a near generation, uh, we're going to get to that. The problem is, is that um, just because you want to do it doesn't mean you can do it because there's a lot of back end involved. And so you've got programming, you've got software, you've got Google Analytics, you've got Google Tag Manager, you've got MailChimp. So all of these things need to be happening on the back end. And so we don't have a huge budget for that stuff. And so we have people working 30 hours a week that are working on that stuff right now, but everything takes longer than we want. And there, <laughs> there's a lot of beta testing that goes into it. So, you know, sometimes like one page takes, it feels like it takes three days, even though you, you thought you finished it after day one. So. We're open to suggestions. Uh, I understand why people want bundles. Here, here's the basics. 
no discounts on live classes because they are premium and they're selling out every week. And so there's absolutely no reason. In fact, most people say I should be raising my prices on those, but I don't want to gouge people during COVID. I'll wait till after COVID and gouge people, right, Justin? Yeah, John. But we are looking to make great deals on on demand. So uh, um, we think 75% off is a great deal. We think 25% off is a great deal. Um, we're, we're open to anything. Uh, I think Justin, everybody who, who was involved in the actual on-demand classes that we chose from the live classes got a hundred percent off. So yeah, I, I get the bundle thing. We're, we're going to have to work on that. Uh, the next round of the classes that will be launched on demand will be these, uh, these part two classes of the intermediate and the advanced. And also there's going to be some kind of thematic classes with pizza styles or specific topics. So once we get that up and running, then we'll look into bundles, but it's not a terrible idea. We're trying to give as many discounts as possible. Yeah. The bundle thing again, has some, has some back end issues that we're, we're looking at to uh i i agree with all that stuff for sure so john's asking about the old breville pizziolo uh it, maintenance and cleaning uh, you know john i just gotta say that both noel and i have dabbled with the machine we both enjoy the machine i haven't used it enough that it's gotten uh any um you know cooking chamber issues with cleaning usually I did, the last time I used it, it was for my birthday. Thank you very much. It was back in January. I did a, a fry and pie party. So I had the pizziola right there next to a deep fat fryer. So I was making chicken wings, then I make a pizza and then make some curly fries and then I make a pizza. And then, so I didn't have any problems with it heating up. And it seemed like my only, my criticism would be price point, um, uh, size of your pie. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a size queen. I'm more of a time and temp queen uh, size of your pie that you're kicking out. And as far as I can tell, Noel and I both live in, <clears throat> some would say tiny, I would say average size apartments in Southern California. I'm in Venice. He's in Santa Monica. And as far as single use appliances uh, versus counter space, uh, it does not compute with my wife. Fair enough. When if I could. So I don't know if anybody else out there has any, you know, who, you know, who would be able to help you with that? Uh, Adam Kuban, who we are doing a class with. When are we doing the class with Adam? No. Uh, coming up in a few weeks. I'll have to look at my calendar. Yeah. A few weeks, John, we have Adam and he has, he's cooked with that with us on some classes before. And uh, he would be a, a good wealth of information to talk about that. So. So, Justin, I don't two, know. Weeks from, two weeks from today, Adam Kuban. That's we, going to be going live on the, ca on the calendar this week. So two weeks from today. So, no, uh, I know we just we don't have any questions right now, so I'm going to use let's, let's go to that Breville question. So one of the issues with the Breville uh, is there's certain parts you want to clean and certain parts you don't. And so for me, I don't want to clean the stone. Right. I want that to get all, all, all gooey and, and I want there to be a little bit of, of a caked on kind of <laughs> layer. You? Let me jump. Let me jump in here. I I don't know this, and maybe you because uh, I heard that Breville actually changed the stone to something else for their this the version that they've got out now. It's not the original, and maybe maybe somebody out there has uh, more answers to that. But I believe that Breville had some design issues with their original ceramic stone and has changed into something else. If anybody out there knows that, but no, um, just, I just, yeah, I just cleaned my window uh, so that I can actually see the pizzas, which is sometimes difficult because you don't really want to open that oven up too many times to either look at it or, uh, or, or, or rotate the pie or yeah. move the pie. Yeah. I use a, uh, I, I have a Breville smart oven that we use, which uh, is a multi-purpose oven. Uh, you know, I took that, that little swipe there, but uh, it only goes to 480. Uh, and I use a steel in that, but I tell you, um, yeah, John is saying it has a different stone design. Thanks, Johnny. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I constantly am cleaning my window so I can see what the hay is going on because I don't like, I don't like to open and close it. Once, once I give it a tor turn after four minutes. Once is good. I find that um, I, le I like my Breville to cool off and then the next morning I'll turn it on and give it like two minutes on and then I just take a, a, a damp towel and it's really easy to clean. Yeah. So Ezra, Ezra is asking for anyone that takes part in the live classes, will they be given access to these classes on demand? Yeah, what we're saying, Ezra, is you get a 75% off coupon. 75% off for the class that you took and then 25% off for other classes on demand. 
And we're going to be making, uh, we're going to be having fun contests and we're going to be doing all kinds of giveaways uh, in the future to promote the classes. Right now, we're still kind of in beta. And so like we had some issues last week and the week before. So we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want our on-demand classes to get too, too, too busy uh, before we, we, we weed out all of the worms in the garden. Right, Justin? Yeah, there definitely, uh, there's a little, you know, ghost in the machine, guys. I don't know what, if Noel said it, but, you know, the first round we were spamming after we had the website up, we were sending eight emails, eight or nine emails at two minute intervals to say, oh, please, please give us your feedback. Oh, please, please give us your feedback. So uh, we had to just ixnay that on the whole thing. But, you know, guys, we're working it out. You know, bear with us. We're a bunch of pizza geeks. You know, we don't know much about things like internets and all that stuff. So, hey. Hey, we're doing what we can to make it accessible, and uh, we're trying to have a good time doing it. So, uh, no, talk to me about wow, these people that you're, we're coming on today. Good. Uh, about nine more minutes here. Uh, no questions in the Q and A. So, talk to me good. about talk to me about our friend Kelly Bone. Well, so Kelly Kelly used to work for Slice at Serious Eats, and when I was an aspiring pizza maker, not knowing where to get information from, I found Slice, and. Um, uh, Adam Kuban was running Slice, right? Okay. And Kelly was the West Coast correspondent. And I really looked up to those people because uh, they, I felt like they were my people, right? We talked about dough. We talked about toppings. Um, they would introduce us to people around the country who were doing cool stuff at home. Um, people, I, I just like the way they created like a fun little forum for like-minded people. And Kelly was always doing reviews around Los Angeles and Southern California. I didn't know who she was. I had never met her. Uh, and in fact, at one point, um, uh, she did a pizza party. And me and this guy named Lance, who I also met through, through Slice, were like, let's go, to, let's go to her pizza party at some weird Brazilian place and meet Kelly Bone. We were so excited. So we, we actually went and we sat there like, oh, my God, that's Kelly Bone. We were like so in awe of her. So she's a great writer. Uh, she is she also knows I don't I don't think she has a ton of experience making pizza, but actually she's taken all of our classes and she's she does really well. So she's a good cook. She has an amazing palate. If you believe her Instagram, she's she's crushing some pies as far as she I kills know. it. She kills but it. But she her take is uh, doing stuff vegan, correct? Well, she is vegan. And so she's always looking if you look at her Instagram, there's almost no pizza on it. Right. Right. But she 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 gets around. And also, I like how discriminating her palate is. I love her writing style. She's like a real writer. She takes things very seriously. She's super sweet, but she's serious about like food, which I love, you know, and she's very unassuming. And, and I, I love Kelly Bell. She's one of my favorites. So it's funny because I don't know what other people do or how they find talent, but I just I have pizza friends around the world. And these are the people that I want to bring on my classes because I don't know how many people have ever heard of Kelly Bone or McKelly who are working with tomorrow. You know, these are, these are inside, like kind of like inside the pizza beltway people, but I don't, I don't want famous people. I want people who, who I feel passionately about and who I think are doing good work. And I want to introduce them to all my new pizza friends. Yeah. We were talking last week about some people that uh, people are saying, who would you guys want us to bring on? Who would you want us to chit chat with? Who would you want us to collaborate with? And we had uh, you know, a mix of people, but like Noel's saying is that we're not going for the, uh, the triple a uh, list team because we don't think that those guys, Guys, uh, or gals need any more exposure at this time. Now, maybe in the future we'll wax on that, but I think it's good to compare what is coming next with what is has come before a little bit and see really where the pizza game might be headed uh, and, and uh, talk to the people that are doing that. Like what we like to say, guys, it's all about that foundato. Be, you know, let's, let's get this foundation so we can build on it. So uh, Will's got a good question about vegan cheese. Will, we're going to bring that on when Kelly Bone gets here. So after Kelly, we've got Attilio. Talk to me about Attilio. This guy. I love Attilio. So I have a very specific relationship with New York pizza. And that's because my mom is from New York, from Brooklyn specifically. Okay. And so... Uh, my dad's from Chicago, and, and I didn't know it when I was a kid, but I'd go to New York and Chicago, and like I said, unbeknownst to me, I was eating at two of the best New York and Chicago pizzerias, period, that happened to be in our neighborhood, right? So in New York, there was Tatano's in Brooklyn, uh, right along Surf Avenue. 
unbelievable coal-fired thin crust pizza like that was my mom's go-to place not far from nathan's hot dogs i'm like i took this stuff for granted i thought everybody had a nathan's near their grandma's house right nature being human we always take stuff that we have for granted eh? you know yeah so so and also, like I had an uncle who had a who had a, a pharmacy in Staten Island, so we'd go to Staten Island, and we would get these giant slices. Right? They were like a dollar. They were like a dollar twenty-five. They were so huge. If honestly, Justin, when I was like eight years old, if you ate two slices and a Coke, you were king of the world. All right, you walked out and you were Rocky Balboa. You were ready to take on the world. Yeah, they were so thin and so perfect. Every bite was like, I'm so – I that's actually the main reason I came to New York, to eat pizza. Even though I was eight and I loved my grandma, I'll take pizza over grandma any day. That stuff was so good. That's Staten Island pizza. Yeah. So back to Attilio. Apparently, Attilio grew up in Staten Island, and he was in a, a neighborhood that had a lot of uh, 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 Jews and Italians. And he was Italian, but didn't get a job at a pizzeria. He got a job at a bagel place. One of his friends got him in. And we were talking the other day, and he, I'm going to interview him a little bit so people get to know him. But he's amazing. He started working in a bagel place when he was 13, like as a stock boy, and maybe did deliveries or whatever. And then they finally, when I think when he was 15, they let him start making bagels. And then he ended up moving on to pizza. And I really, really, really appreciate the, the, the road that he's traveled on because he, it, he traveled on a very common road, neighborhood pizzeria. And a lot of people kind of stick with what they know, and he's really branched out. So he started with yeast, went to sourdough, started with, you know, really commercial flour. And now he's doing all or as much as he can during COVID, uh, locally milled grains. Awesome. Right. Same with the cheeses, same, same with everything. So he's really taken pizza to the next level. He came out and worked with me uh, before COVID, and we did about two days together working on different techniques. So I really feel like I got to know him. And for me, I was making fun of him in the last post I did because he's kind of a walking stereotype. He's got big muscles. He looks like one of those Jersey Shore kids, right? Ta oh, huge. Tattoos. There he is, Attilio. <laughs> hey, you're not, we're not ready for you yet. This guy, he's Zoom bombing us. Oh, Zoom man. bomb, Attilio, go back home. We're yeah. calling you when we're ready. Changing you to attendee, bud. Um, that's we're so We're fun. good. We love you, Attilio. Anyway, he shows up at my place. He's awesome. We got along great. <laughs> and I'm probably a walking stereotype too, right? But for me, like, those Jersey Shore guys are like, what? What? You can't take him seriously. Attilio, you can take seriously. He's like, he's like Jersey Shore, like, squared or cubed. He's out go. of control. Uh, let's go on to our final uh, Inez, who is your friend and mine. What are we going to talk about with Inez? Well, so Inez, I've known for a long time. She worked as a pizziola at one of my favorite pizzerias, which was Soto. It's no longer around, but Steve Sampson has a, a pizzeria now and a restaurant downtown. So mm -hmm. Steve is awesome. His restaurant Soto is awesome. He had an amazing uh, wood-fired oven in his place that was built on site by one of the one of the big three pizza families in Naples. Yeah, Stefano so, Ferraro. What do they What do they do with those when the pizza place closes i still well, walter mansky i think is taking over that location so yeah uh, so he's going to do something awesome with it great, of course great so inez worked there and i never met her and then uh I, I i forget exactly where we met and we started working together doing we did some pop-ups together we did some catered events together we hung out as friends together and i just really appreciate what she's doing and it's funny like Right now, I think she's busier than ever, just like just like we are. And she's doing uh, pop up. She's doing do it yourself uh, dough kits. And she's I just love how creative she is. She has a great vibe. She makes really good pizza. She's super fun. Also, like, you know, there's such there's such an amazing renaissance going on with pizza pop ups. And I feel like we get a lot of people in our classes. Sometimes the majority of the people in our classes, as you know, Justin, right. aren't pros and aren't beginners. They're like in that in between area. You know, we've had a lot of people that have taken our classes and then are like we're seeing on Instagram. They've got two rock boxes and they're selling 100 pizzas uh, at, you know, some event on a Friday, you know, mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. I just gotta applaud that. I just, mm -hmm. I just gotta applaud that. So, and she is, uh, she is our local, you know, she's our West Side uh, neighbor as well. As far she as is. she's literally walking distance from my place. So, so I'm excited to get uh, spend some QT with her. So guys, here's. Yes. What we're
gonna do, uh, we're gonna bring these guys on. No, it, they're gonna have a little Q and A, a little chit chat back and forth. If you do have Q and A's, what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna pop off, but no, if there is a burning question, you'll probably see this, this beautiness uh, pop on. Billy, I know that we've got some, uh, some uh, already some questions for Kelly Bone. And Laura, I see that we've got some resources. We're gonna talk about the bleep flower oh, once Atilio gets here. So guys, keep hitting me up uh, with the questions. If there's anything you need, let us know. But uh, without any further ado, what do you think? You, should I should I bluebell Kelly Bone Let's on? Let's bluebell Kelly Bone. Let's see if she can get on. Kelly Bone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kelly Bone. Kelly Bone, come on home. She's not she even on. She's on. Oh, wait, no. She's I got to I gotta bring her on. Oh, that's, that's me. I, I, <laughs> Justin, ring your own. But maybe Kelly should ring the bell and you bring her on. Here we go. Kelly Bone, ladies and gentlemen. Kelly Bone. <laughs> Justin, what's going on? Yeah, here she comes. Hi, Kelly. Uh, you have to unmute yourself. You have to unmute yourself. Please. There we go. You can hear me now? Loud and clear. Okay, perfect. So, hi. Hi, Kelly Bone. How are you? Good. Thank you for the introduction. That was actually very, it was, it's, I don't usually get to hear other people talk about me, not to me. So that was actually really nice to hear. <laughs> I didn't have any prepared remarks. I was just speaking, uh, is the word extemporaneously? Justin, help me out. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I mean, off, off the cuff, off the top of my head. You know, you were, me and Lance, we, we came to your party to meet you. I don't know if you yeah. remember it. It was some little oh, Brazilian place. I remember it. I was actually looking through photos last night of pizza, and actually the photos from that one came up. And I have pictures of you, and you had brought your own bread to share with everyone. Always did. Always did. That was my thing back then. I was just looking for uh, occasions to make bread and share. Yeah. You have to scan some of those for me. I always like – Older pictures of Noel. <laughs> I have a lot of good ones. Oh, here he goes, Justin. There you go. That's my bar mitzvah. Justin, so good. <laughs> Temple Judea, 1979, uh, Tarzana, California. Thank you for that, Justin. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to hop Oh, foul. Justin. Justin. I'm going to hop on the illusion. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Smoke and mirrors. No, don't look at the man behind the screen, for the love of God. Jeez Louise. I'm just going to go over here to my going to redo my background. You guys have fun. Uh, Thank you. And bye, okay? Thank you. Hi, Kelly. Hi. <laughs> so let's chit chat a little bit, and then Justin will hop back on and, and, and feed us some questions softball style. What do you think? That sounds great. All right. So where do we start? Uh, well, uh, we'll start with kind of well, what you were kind of saying before with um, I have – I was actually very surprised when you had first asked me to do this. Because as you said, I don't have, a, I don't personally have a lot of experience making pizza. And I kind of want to explain why. Because um, I've obviously been involved in the pizza world and eating pizza and reviewing and writing and studying it. And because I, I have pretty high standards for pizza, um, I, I knew it would, it would require a lot of work for me to learn it. And I just... I was always very intimidated by myself yeah. to make the pizza. So I was actually really excited when you started these classes and I'm working from home. So it just, I actually had the time to dedicate to like be here and monitor dough and be able to slowly learn the process. So your classes have been very helpful for me. Um, Thank you. But then regarding toppings. So when I was writing for slice, um, that's what I was hired to write about was toppings. So what I did was um, basically I just contacted restaurants. I contacted pizzerias that I loved and asked them, can I come into your kitchen and just basically follow you around and see what you're doing? And I would go in and I would document. Um, often we would do like a number of pizzas, and but then I would write about one of them, maybe two. But um, I really was in there seeing what a lot of pizzerias we're doing so I learned a lot of um, cooking techniques and how those relate to pizzas and that has always informed uh, my writing and my knowledge and what else do I say? so again, going back um, I, I so remember when you came to that 
the Brazilian pizza party. Like it was actually very exciting for me because I was like, oh, here's someone who has so much dough knowledge. And that's something that um, I want to learn more about. So it was like an honor for me to get to learn from you. And so I, I actually think we developed a really good friendship over the years, like being able to discuss these things. And I got to learn things and like, I got to teach you things, which is crazy to me. But um, yeah, it's been. No, you did. You did. I didn't know you were hired to write about toppings. I was just always, uh, I always read everything that you wrote very carefully because I feel like a lot of care went into it and I learned a lot. And so I'm, I actually don't focus very much on toppings. I mean, I do, right. but in a very super simple, rustic way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I appreciate what you do. Thank well, you. Thank you. And obviously at that time I was not vegan. Um, so I started, I started to transition about five years ago and that was actually the pizza part was pretty hard for me to be like, I'm going to have to stop writing about pizza because I'm going into a new, new world. And a lot of things that I knew aren't going to be relevant anymore. But, um, I'd say I've relearned vegan pizza and I have learned that there actually is bad pizza out there. I kind of didn't believe that at first, but there's some really bad pizza when you start delving into the vegan world. And so I started thinking about a lot of the principles I learned when writing about toppings and being in all those kitchens. And um, I've now come to find, like, I can recognize uh, who is doing vegan pizza well and who is doing it as an afterthought. So um, that's kind of, again, when you asked me to do this class, I was like, this is a topic I really do actually want to talk about because I, it's been like five years now. I really feel like I understand uh, what the issues are with vegan pizza and what makes a success, successful vegan pizza. Um, yeah. And awesome. okay, also with a uh, professional chef and professional kitchens, it, it's also important to me to kind of look at the things that they already have on hand. Like I don't necessarily want to ask pizzerias to be buying lots of specialized ingredients, but there's a lot of things that people have on hand already that they can turn into fantastic toppings. Well, so like, for instance, what do you keep on hand that you think helps to make fantastic toppings? So, um, the three things that I use a lot because they, they just deliver so much flavor is uh, mushroom seasoning. And I'll get more into that in the class. There's a lot of various types out there. And, but um, it's really, you have to kind of delve into the Asian markets and that's an area not everyone in pizza is necessarily comfortable with, but it is the only Parmesan replacement that works. Mm. I've tried like everyone on the market. They don't have that sharp, salty bite that just cuts through oh. the flavors. Yes. But like, yeah, an Asian mushroom seasoning. Fantastic. And the other ones are caramelized onions. Again, these are like vegetables, but they just because they've been so much time has been invested into them. Yeah just the flavors come through so strongly. So caramelized onions and then sun-dried tomatoes. And I prefer the oil packed because then you can reuse that oil oh, on the pizza and really get it in there and like spread it throughout. Oh, that, no, that's the best. You know, it's, I, it's funny, just I went, I did, a, I did an event right before COVID. It was a big celebrity event and I bought like $90 worth of sun-dried tomatoes, right, from Italy. And what the amaze, one of the reasons I bought them so that I could drain off the olive oil, right? Mm -hmm. I got like two quarts of this oil and I just used like a teaspoon at a time for salads and roasted vegetables. And yeah. people are always like, what is that incredible flavor, right? You've got great oil. You've got the sweetness and the acidity of mm -hmm. the tomatoes. And it just gives it, is it umami? What do, what do, what do you call yeah, that? It, it is, yeah, because tomatoes are very rich in umami. And so oh. it just gets infused into that oil. And just and when it's sun-dry, it's concentrated. And again, when I read recipes and they're like, drain your oil-packed tomatoes, it's like, oh, no, don't do that. Like that, I mean, that is almost what I like more than the tomato itself is that oil. Right. 
You know, it's interesting. I, I'm lucky because I work with a lot of great chefs and what I'm doing when I'm not working on dough and pizza is I'm, I'm asking, can I make the meatballs, right? Can I make the stock? Uh, can I help with anything really? And what I, what I think is amazing is so many of these great chefs, they take what most people would throw out, they save it and they use it for something else, right? It's mm -hmm. unbelievable. And that is how you build great flavors, right? Yeah, it is. Because all those like kind of usually like, you know, the skins and the, the leftover parts still have so much flavor. And when you can just collect it all and mush it together and make something great, like, yeah, yeah you're, you're saving flavor. And yeah. So I, I have a question for you. I, I, I'm not a vegan, but I do eat a ton of vegetables. And sometimes when I go into a pizzeria, uh, I don't want to have like a pepperoni pizza. I don't want to have a sausage and mushroom, whatever the, the standards are. And I'm looking for interesting combinations. And I, sometimes I, I get, I feel bad for vegans and vegetarians because what passes for a vegetarian pizza, you know, it'll have like uncooked broccoli or like thickly sliced onions or, I mean, like, so what is the difference between like a, a, a gourmet vegetarian or vegan pizza, which is not, right? Anything that says gourmet in a pizzeria is never gourmet. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. what you would consider something that you would want to eat? Well, one of the main elements that I know exactly what you're talking about with like the uncooked broccoli or even just like the thick cut broccoli that looks like it came off the salad bar. <laughs> yeah. And dried out. Yeah. <laughs> like the thing that like um, all the, the toppings especially vegetables, you have to pre-cook or pre-season. Um, so many of them are uh, versus cheese and meats. There's, there's so much water in a lot of them and you want to get as much as that, of that water out. Again, that's concentrating down the flavors. Yeah. So that's um, something I really look for. And I also look for places that are more restrained and refined with the toppings. Cause that usually tells me that they are, really working that topping um like before so leading up to this class i posted a, a pizza from poly g's and in the one in brooklyn and it's the my my vidalia and it's just basically a cheese pizza with caramelized onion and it's just caramelized onions but they're like the best caramelized onions you've ever had and that's that's all it needs like it doesn't need anything else because right. that one vegetable was treated with so much thought and time and love that it has become an amazing thing it's you know it's, it's as good as any like pepperoni out there yeah do me a favor. I know we were talking about audio before. Um, it sounds like, yeah, your microphone is getting a lot of Probably in my noise. hair. Is this yeah, better? In your, no, well, yeah. we, I mean, it's just a free <laughs> webinar, but when we do our class, we got to like we're gonna dial work it up. So let, let's see if we can dial it up during the webinar. All right. All right. Is this any better? Sounds like, a, sounds like a little, a cat was sanding your line. That's totally probably my hair. <laughs> probably your hair. We're still figuring this stuff out. Uh, I'm not, know. I'm, that's another thing is I'm not used to being on camera i'm very much a behind the scenes kind of person i'm not like one of these you know instagram personality types oh, like most man. people like don't even know what i look like right and i kind of prefer it that way but um, right coming out in front of the camera for noel only thank you i'm, <laughs> I'm real. i know I'm, I'm so happy about this i mean a lot of, i've been trying to get lance to come out too and he does it i have to I, or adam kuban i've been calling that guy for literally two years to get him to come. He's my, he's my, he's one of my pizza mentors, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, he, yeah, he's a. We literally would not be here if it wasn't for that guy. And, and there's about maybe 20,000 people in the world who even know who he is. 200,000 people should know who he is. According I to know. me. Right. He's, yeah. so, he's a great teacher. He's so knowledgeable. He's like, I mean, if, if the United States is having a regional pizza renaissance, who, who else can we point to? There's a handful of people, and I'm not part of it, neither are you, that yeah. helped make that happen, right? He was, he was so far ahead of the curb. Yeah. And a lot of times, and I'm sure a lot of people are like, I could have done that. But, like, he had the vision and the drive to do it. And so much right? of, I think, what he does is just because he has the, the drive to do it and to learn and to, yes. to, yeah, to make it happen. 
Awesome. All right. So I know that you uh, you really, really made me happy because you sent me like an outline for some of the classes that you want to do. So why don't we just kind of brainstorm and you can tell me and you can tell them, people listening, what you ha what your ideas are for classes. And then maybe uh, Justin, if he can unmute himself, can come in. And if we have any questions, he can tee them up to us. All right. So what do you think you want to do for the first class? So the first class, I was kind of I was trying to kind of organize and then come up with, you know, zippy titles. So the first one, I'm calling it carbs on carbs, because what <laughs> I'm, <laughs> one of the things I really want to focus on in that class is um, the use of breadcrumbs, because yeah. breadcrumbs, the way you treat them, the way you season them, um, make a fantastic pizza topping. Again, and even pasta, it, when you use that as like a Parmesan replacement on vegetables, on pastas, it's just fantastic. So, um, so for that first one, I was kind of looking at, and I'm going to need, again, I cannot pronounce this. Seth, I wrote it out phonetically here. Seth Ficcione, the breadcrumb. It's like the Italian out. You, you can mean like Sfincione? That one, yes. Thank you. I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering it. I, I just, my mouth cannot put that word together. But um, what it is, is essentially is a, t a tomato base, and you just work in a lot of, again, the umami, caramelized onions, and then these rich, richly seasoned breadcrumbs on top. Yeah. And this is almost like, a, this is like kind of a pan style pizza, which I'm not sure, have you done many classes yet on pan style pizzas? I mean, uh, in person, yes, but not really on the internet. Yeah, so pulling this one out of Noel, I was actually kind of excited about it. He laughed at me when I told him what kind of pan I use, which um, is perfectly fair, which I, I actually think that would be a good kind of balance for the class kind of uh, my equipment is not the most uh, professional, professional. <laughs> but um, I think that that's one of my favorite pizzas. I make that's what I make when I go to like a pizza party. And it's always a hit and unexpected because people are like, what's this pizza that's covered in breadcrumbs. But I mean, it blows your mind. It's Absolutely. so, so flavorful. Um, another pizza I wanted to cover is um, it's called the rabbit pie and they serve it. It's not made with rabbit, obviously. They serve it at uh, Polly G's in uh, Logan Square, Chicago. Um, so Derek, they're fantastic guy and they have an amazing, amazing uh, vegan pizza menu. All the Polly G's do, but I'm particularly fond of their menu. And this one pizza, like the, the magic element is pickled pineapple. Mm, and I, like and I, I was actually talking with Derek a little bit about what their general method is. If you know Polly G's, they tend to be a little more secretive and I 100% respect that they're, you know, they're not necessarily giving away their recipes, but um, I have a pretty good handle of what they do. And I've been experimenting with the pickled pineapple myself. I just think um, as opposed to taking just a raw pineapple or even just a roasted pineapple, when you really infuse it with flavors, um, you're getting something new and exciting. Yeah. And then uh, personal favorite, the one pizza I missed the most when I went vegan was the Rosa from Bianco. I, it's a, it's a magic pizza. I un, like when I first had it, I was like, I understand why this pizza is so popular. It, it's, it's delicious. It's just like just your basic, it, it is a Parmesan base. Um, I have found through trial and error, again, the mushroom seasoning and then some specific uh, vegan cheeses that can work really well as that base uh, with rosemary, any kind of nut. Uh, if you read Chris's story about this pizza, he first made it, or he first envisioned it based on a sesame flatbread that he had had in Italy when he just couldn't get that flavor right. So he just started looking at what's the best nut that he could get in Arizona. And for him, it was pistachio. I personally use the pine nut because that's just my personal favorite and I always have good pine nuts on hand. So it just, it's a really good herb nut pizza. And I really feel like I've nailed um, what I love about that pizza. It, it obviously doesn't taste exactly like uh, the Chris Bianco one, but it has all the elements that make it magical with it being vegan. Absolutely. 
Yeah. You know, I think it's also important. Um, I mean, I'm listening to what you're saying, and I, I often make the same recipes again and again, roasted vegetables in a lot of ways. And when you get something that just hits you in just that right way, it honestly, you don't think about it, but like just changing one little detail and all of a sudden, boom, that's it. I'll give you an example. We roasted um, zucchini last night and I was thinking about your class. And so normally when I roast zucchini, I use a little bit of tomato water, a little bit of garlic. Uh, I use an anchovy right? Maybe some uh, oil from the Italian fermented chilies that I have and salt and pepper, pretty simple. Uh, and if, I, if I'm really looking for like a slow roast, I'll add a little chicken stock. But last night I was like, I'm not going to do any chicken stock. I'm not going to do any anchovy. I looked in my refrigerator and I've been making beans lately. My wife loves beans. And I, I save the bean water because I'm like, there's flavor there. So it was bean water and tomato water, uh, fermented chili oil, salt, pepper. And I was like, we'll see. It came out of the oven and it was so amazing. Instead of having dinner, my wife stood there in front of the bowl and just ate these things. She's from Argentina. She I wants know. to eat meat three times a day. She doesn't <laughs> want bean water, right? And she's like, what's in here? And I'm like, Kelly Bones bean water. She's like, Kelly Bone. I'm like, well, I was just channeling Kelly when I made it. And it was so good. I think that's going to be our new recipe. Yeah. And yeah, I actually, I totally do that kind of stuff too, where I save those, I save my bean water, obviously. I mean, with, in the vegan world, aquafaba is like a big, big deal. I'm sorry, that's a thing? The, oh yeah, aqua, the, specifically it's chickpea water because um, yeah, for sure. you can whip that up like an egg white. Right. And um, it also makes fantastic salad dressing. All right, a whole lot. Right, so here's the thing. I feel like there's a whole world of flavor and recipes that I don't know about. So we're going to before we do our first class, you're, you're like taking these things for granted. Like we know, I'm pretty sure if we, if we, water. You know, I mean, I thought I invented it because I'm just cheap and I always like to just try stuff out and it makes sense though, because I've used, I've used uh, chickpea water uh, mm -hmm. and I'm like, this is gold. Oh my God. It's almost better than the chickpeas. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, good stuff. Does magical things. Awesome. Uh, so let's do me a favor, Kelly. I'm still hearing a lot of noise. Oh. Line noise. So here's what you can do. No, no, no. It's not your hair. It's I not. think you're. No, I think it's rubbing against your shirt. So you haven't I clipped. What do you have? No, don't no. hold it. No. Where Where does that Where does that line? Are you running it inside of your shirt? It, no. Well, here. I usually only have it in one ear. So don't no, no, just do out. this. Just hold, sometimes I'll do this also. Just hold it. Like, yeah, you want it, you want, but I, where's, where's your actual mic? It's here. Yeah, it's rubbing. So you just want to keep it off your shirt. Let's see if that okay. works. Is this any better? It's better so I far. Hope. I mean, okay. I have very sensitive e earphones here, uh, but it's driving me nuts. And also if we're going to record these things, we want people to listen. Yeah. We'll, 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 we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We're going to practice on this. So the, yeah, again, this is my first time on camera. No, so no, no, no. I'm just trying, you know. We're not, we're very, we're very, we're, we're not low budget. We're no budget. Yeah, yeah. You're doing a great job. So, I, <laughs> Kelly, a lot of people are giving props out there saying shout out to uh, Polly G. Yes. Of that stuff. And I guess I didn't realize that he had so many vegan options on his menu. Oh, yeah. So, uh, that's, that's good to know. That's good to know. So, uh, I do have a couple questions. And one of them, I know you kind of danced on it a little bit. But uh, uh, Will is asking, he has some vegan in-laws and he really likes the Caputo gluten-free flour. And he says it's, it's very good for the Neapolitan pizza. Do you have a flour that you have used that's commercial or do you usually mix different types of flours for your recipe? So um, what I use, I use Central Milling, the Artisanal Baking Plus, and I have the T85 and the reason I have the, those are the flowers I've been using with pizzas because that's actually what I use for sourdough. Gotcha. So those are the ones I use. Now I am going to address something here, which you were you just said gluten free and gluten free is not vegan. Right. The right, two right. have nothing to do with each other. And when we were actually first um, conceptualizing this class. Uh, Noel had asked, we want to do gluten free. And I was like, no. Right. And the only reason is because the two, especially in restaurant settings and with people who, you know, that's not their world, they, they get intermingled. And while I think there are a lot of vegans who are also gluten free, there are a lot of gluten free people who are not vegan and they don't necessarily want the vegan pizzas. So I try, I try very hard to keep the two separate, but um, 
I know even when I was posting about this last night, I had people like, where do I get gluten-free pizza? And like, if you're in San Diego, I know exactly where to go and I can tell you. Well, there you um, go. <laughs> well, that, that brings me to the next question, actually, because then he, he, uh, he pivoted to uh, cheeses that he hasn't found a good cheese commercially, the Daya or any of the vegan cheeses. I know that when Noel and I used to do the uh, in-person classes, we had used a couple of the cheeses. And I think the best one that we found, I don't remember the brand name, but it was actually like a vegan uh, uh, cream cheese that seemed to melt relatively well versus the shreds of any kind that we could find that we're trying to emulate I think that there was some, you know, almond something or something like that. So if you have any insights, some people were asking about that sort of stuff. Yeah, Um, I have a lot of thoughts about the vegan cheeses on the market. I've tried pretty much all of them that are available on the West Coast. Um, For for something that's sort of mimicking like a fresh or semi-moist mozzarella Miyoko's, Mozzarella is the best one you're going to get on the market. It's more of like a cashew pate that's been firmed up with uh, a refined coconut oil. It melts beautifully. It browns. um, And again, it kind of mimics that semi-fresh, semi-moist mozzarella really, really well. Um, I am going to say do not get the smoked one for pizza. Uh, That is is my favorite one in general, but it, it doesn't work. It doesn't translate that well on pizza. I was kind of disappointed recently with that one. And then uh, regarding shreds, much like with regular cheese, shreds just don't always make the best pizza, like the pre-shredded kind. If you're going to shred it yourself, that's great. But the pre-shredded ones, they're still covered in that, you know, whatever powder they use to keep them all separate. And it just makes them not melt very well. Um, But there is one that I do use, and it is actually the exact one you said, which is the Dea. But Dea reformulated their cheese about two years ago. So now they have one called, um, basically, it's it's Dea Cutting Board Shreds. It comes in a different style bag. For whatever reason, they're still a little hard to find. But, I mean, they'll have them at, like, you know, the Bonds or Ralph's or, you know, at your general supermarket sometimes will have it. And that is by far the best that's going to mimic sort of a New York style, you know, dry mozzarella. It's that, that one is now the best. It doesn't get too sticky. It doesn't have that kind of odd floral that um, the old Daya used to have. And also I should say, for whatever reason, they're still selling that old Daya and it is terrible. Do not use it under any oh, circumstances. Hey, hey. It's We've the gotten worst. in trouble before, Kelly. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> you don't know who's listening. I'm going to get three oh. vicious <laughs> emails with, with, with law firms CC'd. I know. I'm saying their other Daya is better. And they, and they know, have to know that because that's the only one they sell for food service anymore. So any, any restaurant that's serving Daya is using the new formula it's the, fantastic. The cutting board collection. And just so you know, yeah. uh, everybody out there in the chat to all the panelists and attendees, I just put the me. How do you pronounce it? Miyoko's? Miyoko's. Believe Miyoko's it, Creamery. I believe that that was the one that we used that had uh, the, uh, the cream cheese texture. And yeah. then also put a link to the Daya's uh, mozzarella style cutting shreds in the, uh, in the chat there. And then uh, one somebody was asking before we, uh, we have to transition here, who do you go to in, what was it, San Diego? What were San- you saying? Yeah, for pizza or for gluten-free? Which one? For, 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 uh, let's, let's do both. Okay, well, in general, and this is actually going to be for gluten-free too, the, the best pizzeria, no question, in San Diego is uh, Tribute Pizza. So Noel knows Matt, obviously. Um, I've known Matt for many years before he started the pizzeria and he was doing a really fantastic pop-up down here. Um, I was like, clearly this guy knows how to make a good pizza. He's been working and breathing pizza basically his whole adult life. So by far the best. He does everything that I love about pizza. He really, really works those vegetables. He himself is actually, he's vegetarian. So even though the restaurant is not, uh, vegetarian at all um he personally is vegetarian so he puts so much care into the vegetables he selects and then the way he treats them and then the way he tops his pizzas so that is by far my favorite um 
I would also say I recently wrote an article in um, Eater, San Diego here, where I listed basically all my favorite pizzerias in San Diego from North County down. But um, that one is my favorite. I'm going to throw out one more that um, they were kind of like a, a surprise of just how fantastic their pizza was. It's called Wheat and Water, and it's in Bird Rock, which is kind of near La Jolla. And they just, their dough is so thin and so crisp, and it's covered in like a million micro blisters. And just when you bite it, it kind of shatters against your teeth. And then the toppings, it's just vegetables. But um, what he, the way that he's roasting his vegetables and then finishing it with the, uh, it's a, like a pumpkin seed basil pesto. And just that oil kind of drips out of that pesto into the pizza. It's, I mean, it was a, it was a revelation. Sounds delicious, guys. And if anybody's interesting, I just put that in the old chat as well. But being that it is 11 o'clock, Kelly, I don't want to cut you short. Uh, so why don't you stay on and we're going to bring Attilio on. And uh, yeah, no, you feeling it? Yeah, let me, let me just take care of a few administrative things before we do that. Kelly, yes. we have you scheduled for Sunday, October 18. Is that correct? That is correct. We're going to go uh, 10 o'clock just like today. Yep, I'll have and, to wake up. Great. So I, I sleep I, in. <laughs> I, I, I actually like that. I, I understand. I like that you have the uh, central milling uh, type 85, and I like that you have the ABC Artisan Baker's Craft Plus. So probably we're going to supply people with a sourdough recipe. Uh, if they want to make pizza along with us and, and as well, we're going to supply them with some topping recipes that you'll, you'll use for pizza, but I think you're going to show us actually how to prepare those toppings as well. Right. Isn't that the idea? Yeah, I believe so. And what are the three recipes? Were, were there three that we're going to do for that so, class? Well, the three that um, we're going to do, are, well, we're going to do those three pizzas that I talked about earlier. Yep. And then yep. the recipes I'm kind of finishing compiling right now is going to be the seasoned breadcrumbs, uh, caramelized onions, the pickled pineapple, and then um, the sausage spices that we'll be using. I love that. <laughs> like, I don't want to give too much away, but no, yeah, no, those, you can those, give those, as much away as possible. I know. <laughs> that, that's good. So guys, he, here's kind of the idea. The people that I'm bringing on, uh, I want to do regular classes with them. And everybody's super busy. Kelly has uh, at least two other careers that I know of. <laughs> and so if she can come on once every two months or once a month or whenever possible, I want to do regular classes with her. I want to do regular classes with Attilio. Because for me, uh, I don't want to just have one-off classes. I want to kind of build a little community and a little following. And I think it's fun to work with people and give something uh, for people to look forward to. I know myself personally, I was like drowning in COVID hell. And then I created this distraction for myself, which is online pizza classes. And now I'm happy. Sometimes I don't even remember that I'm trapped in my own apartment anymore. So uh, for me, this is a, a welcome distraction. and I love the opportunity to drag Kelly Bone out of her little shell and, <laughs> and, and introduce her to all my new pizza friends. So thank you, Kelly, for, for joining us. Thank you. So if you want to hang out, uh, you, you have a VIP backstage pass. I yep. definitely, I want to hear what everyone has to say. Good, good, yeah. good. And Justin, you know what I'm going to do as well? We got a, we got a quick start this morning, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fire some of those polls uh, for the people who are watching. And guys, we're just trying to get to know uh, who you are out there. We're not selling your information. So I want to find out like what your level of uh, experiences and who you are and what kind of toppings and styles you want. So this is all just going to help us to, uh, to kind of engineer our classes and our guests based on your skill levels and interests. And, and uh, so one, if you don't mind answering. Yeah. One quick thing before we uh, pound those out and uh, bring on Atilio. Uh, is there a, is there a way for people to get central milling flour? Is there a link or something that we have? I Is mean, it, you can go to Central yeah. Milling. Uh, let's see if you can find that one, Justin. I think a lot of people already know about Central Milling, uh, and they do, there's a lot of ways to get that flour. It's really, really awesome flour. Okay. I, um, I mean, I have just ordered it online. You know, I got a 25-pound bag. But I know some of the – I know, like, the local kind of restaurant-ish supply markets carry it as well. Yeah. 
you know, before I was making pizza regularly, there were different uh, pizza groups that I was members of, and they would buy a 50 pound bag and divide it up into 10 portions. So everybody would throw in like $12 and then you'd show up and pick up your five pounds. And it was the best mm -hmm. because I didn't know what type 85 flour was 15 years ago. And so the fact that I could get some and, and play with it and, you know, Central Milling is one of the best mills in the country. And Nicky Justo and his family, they had Justos before Central Milling, killing it for, for decades. And, you know, they started they started like a whole thing up in San Francisco because I think a lot of people were just using, you know, regular old commercial flour before. And so, you know, artisan baking in California, the I think the birthplace of it really is San Francisco. And even though L.A. is picking up the slack and, and San Diego, too, we don't really have much of a uh, much of a history or a culture until pretty recently. Right. So, yeah. So. You, I mean, guys, you guys have you guys have the you, what, are the, what are those guys? What are those guys down uh, down South, Kelly? The, the, the what brothers? The guys who have that little bakery. Oh, Prager. Oh, yeah. Oh, fantastic. Oh. Yeah, that's that's the only bread that Prager and Wayfair are the two bakeries here. Right. That, those are amazing. Those are the only only bread I buy. I actually thought of them because there was a, I saw a question from Laura Meyer uh, on the chat and she was asking about sprouted grains. So uh, Laura, I think you're up in the Bay area. Um, I, I do, um, I do sprouted grains down here. I don't buy sprouted. Uh, I know I can get them from King Arthur. They have a really nice sprouted grain flour, but I buy grains from like the farmer's market. We have Kandarian there and I know the Prager brothers, uh, they sprout a lot of their own grains too. So um, I, I just buy grains from the farmer's market or from local mills before they grind them down and sprout them myself. And I think that's the best thing you can possibly do. So why don't they get to that and just give a shout out to the Prager brothers, even though I couldn't remember their name. They're yeah. awesome. I got to get them in on the class too. Their bread is amazing. I would watch that. Oh my God. Right? Me yeah. Too. Me too. All right, Kelly, thank you again. Right. Stick around and looking thank forward you. to our class on the, on the 18th. All right, guys, we don't have a, we're not, we're not live on the sign up yet because we have to get our recipes together, but Kelly, let's do that in the next couple of days so we can get that yes. link live for people to sign up. All yep. right. I've been, I've been running through them and really nailing them down. So yeah, Good. we'll have those Perfect. soon. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to bring right. on Attilio. Attilio, you're going to get the blue belly of pizza -ness. We'll see. We'll see if Atilio comes on or not. There he is. Where is he? Where is he? I still see Kelly Bone. I guess I have, I have to change my view. Let's get the gallery view going. There we go. Atilio. You're muted, brother. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? Welcome back. Thank you. I say welcome back because you Zoom bombed us at the beginning. Oh, did I? <laughs> Yeah, you're supposed to come on with your video off and your audio muted, but you know what? It's a free webinar, so you get what you get. I always like to see your face, although I cannot see your face. You're like backlit by the sun. There you hold, go. On. hold on, hold uh... on. That's all right. Take your time. We're just sending out polls to people. Perfect. Is that better? That's awesome. Perfect. Where are you there? Uh, in the office. In the office, huh? Is that where all the action happens? Uh, at the moment, in about an hour, I'll be upstairs. <laughs> so what's going? Where, where, tell us where you are. Are you in uh, New Jersey? Uh, Kenilworth, New Jersey. Is that uh, north or south Jersey? For those of us who don't know, um, it's considered central New Jersey. Uh, Fifteen mm. minutes from Newark Airport. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And uh, so, uh, what are you up to today? Are you doing a big catering order? Yeah, I just knocked that out before, and then. Um, we open up at 4 p.m., so at 3 o'clock, i got to start getting ready to rock and roll. That sounds good. Yeah. Well, we're going to keep you, but not for too long. No, that's fine. Okay? I'm excited. I'm excited, too. So, uh, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff we can talk about. Um, the thing that I'm most excited about is that I consider you like an enlightened New York pizza maker. And by enlightened, I mean you started out – like, you know, at neighborhood pizzerias and bagel shops, I was talking about it earlier. And Correct. you kind of chose your own path. You got away from the path that a lot of people stay on their whole lives. So I, I kind of want to, you know, I, I, we're going to, I know I'm really excited to do a bunch of classes with you, but I, I kind of want you to introduce yourself and tell, tell people about your journey, where you started, how you ended up where you are. You mind if we just start with that? Yeah, sure. So when I was 13 years old, I started to work in a popular bagel store in Staten Island. I started off as a stock boy. Then they put me into, uh, they had me working behind the deli counter. Then they asked me if I wanted to be a baker. 
So I did all the baking in house. And then eventually I learned how to make the dough for all the bagels. I used to make apple turnovers, croissants. So I learned a lot from the bagel industry. Then when I was around 23 years old, I decided- Well, wait, 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 too fast, too fast. Let's slow it down. So wait, what, at what age were you making uh, the actual dough? So actually I started to bake first. I was baking at 15 years old. 15 years old. Did your parents yeah. know about this? They did. They did. I mean, but that's an me adult of, job. Me trouble. <laughs> Were so. you in a lot of trouble at that age? Um, here and there. Here and there. But, All right. Yeah, but I, wor I worked a lot, though. How much, how much is a lot? Back then, um, I would say I was probably working 50, 60 hours a week with, going, <laughs> with, with high school. <laughs> that's amazing. With high school. So you went to high school and you worked 50, 60 hours a week. Correct. I, yeah. My mom wouldn't let me work more than 30. I would try to sneak in 35, but that's a lot. Yeah, it worked a lot. So, for example, on a Saturday night, I had to go in at 2 a.m. to get ready for, su yeah, for Sunday morning. That's Start amazing. Started the day was 2 a.m. I, I had to be ready to rock and roll for 5 o'clock. And keep in mind, Don't we have work. child labor laws in this, in this country? Uh, back then, no. <laughs> I think they just started going to effect in the last maybe 10 years, but back then, definitely not. I love that. That's awesome. But, um, All right, so, so I, I cut you off. So, so 13, you were doing stock. 15, you started mixing dough. How long did you spend? What was the total number of years you spent before you got into pizza? I left, well, I left there when I was 17 years old. They actually, uh, they wanted me to work in one of their, um, they had a German bakery. Wow. They wanted to bring me on board with, and I actually turned them down. Then later on, when I was about 20, uh, 22 years old, I signed a lease for a store in Cranford, New Jersey. And I was going to open up a brick oven bagel store. And at the time, my wife's brother had a franchise pizzeria in Staten Island, brick oven. Uh, it's called Goodfellas Pizza. So I, started, I used to go there back and forth, fool around with their oven, make pizzas. And at last second, I decided to turn that location that was going to turn into a bagel store, I decided to go with brick oven pizza. Wow. Because I hate the hours at a bagel store. It's just not for me. You have to be in at 3 a.m. You're done at 5 p.m. Go back to sleep to come back into work. With the <laughs> restaurant, you have a little bit more of a life. So, bagel store is rough, for sure. But, and then I decided to just go with pizza. But I opened up my first location in 2004 in Cranford, New Jersey. But at that time, I'm not going to mention any flower brands, names, but I was using what I referred to as shit flour for the 14 years of my first location. And I was also using commercial yeast. And then later on, um, I fell in love with this one company called Bobo Link Dairy out of Milford, New Jersey. And they're a grass-fed farm. They make amazing cheeses. Uh, hold on one second. They make a bunch of nice cheeses. And they also make oh, beautiful bread. They use a lot of ancient grains. So I decided to call one of the owners there by the name of Nina White. And I asked if she would, if she minded teaching me one-on-one. -on -one. And I wanted to learn from her. And she said, yes. She brought me on board. She told me about, you know, sourdough starter. She, I also learned from her about the different grains. And that's where I changed my whole outlook on working with, you know, local flowers and grains. So wow. I'm just, you know, for me, I'm not going to mention any names, but I'm against using imported flowers and everything else. I, the flour I buy comes with a milling date. I use the flour with at, at max. I mean, I use it within a month period from the milling date. Wow. And like I told you before, like the basement that I have here, I'm very fortunate for the basement. Um, right now the basement's at 70 degrees and I would say all year long, it fluctuates anywhere from 65 to 70 degrees. So, so my flour is always kept at a nice cool temperature. Um, so I don't really have to worry about too much. Like from example, some of the stuff I learned from you, the desired dough temperature, my flour is always at 68, 70 degrees. The room temp is always at 68, 70 degrees. But the only thing I have to worry about is the water temperature, which that does change big time. So in the summer months, that water that comes straight out of that sink, it's hot, you know, just from the ground. So I, I always work with ice water. Awesome. Yeah. So did you, I mean, let's, let's talk about, uh, that your, your, your change for your, or your, your transition from bagels to pizza. How did it go when you first opened that, that pizzeria? It went well. It did. I was busy. 
The only thing is I did not understand the business side of the restaurant when I first opened. That I learned over a period of time. But, yeah, I was busy. And I mean, it was a good pie. I was making more of a thin crust style of a pizza back then. And what I, oven did you have? I had a um, – it, it was a brick oven built from scratch. I never really? worked with a regular pizza oven before in my life. Never. I probably, I think by you is the first time. <laughs> and I fell in love with the electric oven. Now I have one waiting for me. Uh, you sure do. You got a Mive, didn't you? Yes. You got a good one, man. You got the deal of a century, literally. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. All right. So that's good news. So then um, here, here's a question for you. So yeah. I imagine that growing up in Staten Island in New Jersey, because there's such a strong history uh, and, and pizza culture, ha, introducing things like sourdough, introducing like uh, ancient grains, um, obviously it changes the flavor. It changes the look. It changes everything right. about the pizza. Definitely. How do you, I mean, do you find that you have to really educate people? Yes. And even for me, when I first opened my new location, I would say for the first few months, I was playing around the dough recipe. I wanted to try to find a nice, a nice equal balance where it wasn't overpowering the customer. Cause at first I would say it definitely was. You mean the sourdough? Yeah, just, I mean, between the sourdough and how much, you know, specific flowers I was using in my recipe. So I started dialing it down a little bit. So, I mean, currently right now, I use a combination of half-white bread flour and all-purpose flour. And they're both overall like a small, um, they're both on the lower side of, you know, gluten percentage. Yeah. So the all-purpose I use is around 10 point, I don't know, 3%, and the half-white is close to... 12%. So I, I definitely, good. No, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. And then um, also the, I feed my starter with the half white bread flour as well. Where when I first started working with my starter, I was feeding it rye flour to give it strength. But my, my the starter I use is a powerhouse. And so, Let's, let's talk about um, the class that we're going to teach together, and hopefully we're going to teach a few. Okay. So I know that you, for me, when you came to work with me, you really wanted to, I know you wanted to learn about uh, higher hydration stuff, and Correct. you worked with Pan Pizza, and you did a great job, and just, we only worked together for about two days before COVID, but it was great. But, you know, it was funny, yeah. I started following you uh, just before that, and then, and then ever since, I've really been looking at the pizzas you put out. I love the Pan Pizzas you're doing, but the hearth style round pizzas you do for me man those pictures are amazing so i really want to do at least our first class oh for sure where we take what we did in the beginner and intermediate class which is like a, a classic new york style pizza for home bakers right about 65 okay. percent hydration we okay. put a little bit of uh, olive oil and sugar in there just to help okay. with browning but i think we're gonna pump up the volume on the hydration and and go from commercial yeast to sourdough and maybe blend a few flours so t tell us a little okay. bit about like your recipe and your and and how you work the dough and a little bit about your process okay so the flour i use right now and i still right now i every once in a while i fine tweak it i'll change it up slightly but i usually go with about 60 percent bread flour 40 percent all purpose and there are times where i go 50 50 um hydration is overall 73 percent the starter i use hold on you're going so fast hold on so so we're gonna it. we're gonna blend flours right Okay, so yeah, I blend flowers. So I start why, off why do you why people ask me this all the time? So I'm going to ask you the same question. People ask me why do you blend flowers? So the flower I use from the one company, I'm not. I'm going to keep all names out of it. It comes from okay. upstate. It comes from upstate New York from the Finger Lakes. It's an organic flower. So the half white bread flower that I use is it's beige in color. It's strong. So it, it still has a lot of the germ in it. It's it's powerful. So I do cut it with the all purpose to help give it a nice balance. And also I like to give it, it's more of a, so if I use straight half white bread flour, I feel like it becomes a little, how can I say it? I, I like more of a softer product. Let me just keep yeah. it that way. I yeah. do like using the half white bread flour by itself 
for sourdough bread for baking purposes. But for the pizza, I like to cut it with the all-purpose. So I, I, I combine the two. And even the all-purpose that I use, it has a slight beige color to it as well. So it's not like your, your hardcore white flour everyone else uses where everything's stripped from it. This has a lot of nutrients in it still. So you know, I like to fool around with it. And also, I have to pump up the hydration when using this flour. Because once again, it's not your basic everyday shit flour that people use. Like I have a bin of shit flour in the restaurant, but I use that to wash my hands. So when I work with flour, I just rub the shit flour on my hands to keep our hands clean. But let me get this straight. You wash your hands with shit flour. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> All right. So mixing flowers is one thing. Now let's talk about what did you say? What 73% hydration? Correct. For a New York pizza. You're speaking my language. Why oh, the yeah. heck would you dial up your hydration so high? Because I love it. Why do I you love it? It just comes out so much. I don't like a dense pizza crust. Right. I like it to be light in area. So, for example, when we teach that class, I'll show you how I stretch my dough. It's There is no stretching in my dough. Right. It's just touching the dough, yeah. lifting it up, putting it on yeah. the board, throwing it in the oven. Trust me, I would take it to 78%, but I would have to make every single pizza myself. <laughs> it, it would be tough. I know. Me too. Me too. And, and especially on a Friday night, you know, you have to think about during the busy times. Yeah. Can you push out a 78% product when you have, you know, Absolutely. two, 300 pies, you know, where it's tough? Yeah. And you yeah. also have to have a good flowered surface when you're working with high hydration. Absolutely. So, no, it's great. I, I, you know, I love asking you these questions because you're giving me all the answers that, that I love. And I, you know, the first time I went, you, you, you know, about Sullivan street bakery in, uh, in New York, that's Jim Leahy. And so I was lucky enough to be in New York short, short, uh, shortly after, after he ordered, uh, sorry, shortly after he opened co right. And that okay. must've been probably 12, 13 years ago. And uh, that was in Chelsea. And I remember walking in there and for me, like a, uh, a bakery by Jim Leahy, uh, let alone a pizzeria is like my temple. So I go in, I sit down. I'm so excited. I always do the same thing. I get up to pretend I'm going to the restroom and I go try to peek in the kitchen and I stop at the window because I see not Jim, but one of his one of his chefs stretching okay. out a dough. I'm going to say that dough was about 80 percent hydration. There was no stretching. It was exactly what you were talking about. Right. And I was yeah. like, oh, my God, like I. I, I couldn't believe it. And I stood there for, I, they couldn't get me away from there. I had to go back. My wife was waiting, waiting for me. The server wanted us to put it in order, but I couldn't stop watching that guy because for the first time in my life, I saw my dream dough being served in a pizzeria. And people have been telling me for years, especially Italians, no, 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 no. You can't do an 80% dough in a commercial environment. And I was at 88% at that time, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody's telling me you can't do it. And I'm like, I know you can't do it. But then I saw this guy. I'm like, and, and that pizza was one of the best pizza I ever had in my life. And there was nothing on it. Atilio, there was nothing on it. So anyway, you're, you're speaking my language. Thank you. Um, you're frozen, well, and I'm pretty sure that's yeah, me. So we're keep talking. A new location. If yeah. I was going to build a new location and work with high, high, super high hydration, I feel you need, you need a big work surface around the oven. You definitely do. You have to keep everything floured really well because it's the only way you could really work with it. It's, it's tough, but it definitely could be done for sure. For sure. And, you know, and one of the most important things I always tell people when opening a new location is, is try to keep all your rooms tempered if you can. Build an actual dough room. The temperature is key. I mean, that's, I mean, you know, that's what you teach. It's, yeah. it's the most important factor in everything. Absolutely. So I just had a question, I believe it was from a Jason. I sort of pop up real quick and I disappeared. Yeah, yeah. He, wanted, he wanted to know my starter percentage for the pizza recipe. So I do go with 20% starter and the recipe. Gotcha. And that's because I go with, so and that's if I'm going to be baking within 36 hours. If I wanted to go even a longer fermentation, I'm going to dial that down big time. So that's basing it off of a 36-hour 
you know. Very important, very important. So, yeah. you know, a lot of people ask that kind of question to me, and you have to answer the question with a question. The amount of starter that you use is based on so many things, fermentation schedule, temperature, so Correct. many things, right? Flavor profile, the type of flour you're using, the amount of water, even the Correct. mixer, right? There's so many yeah, things definitely. that affect it. Affected. Somebody's asking what your Instagram is. What is your Instagram? My just, personal, my personal Instagram is Pizza by Attilio, A T T I L I O, and the restaurant name, the Instagram for the restaurant is Ava's Kitchen and Bar. Thank you. I love, I love, I, I love following. Uh, I follow both, of course, but your 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 personal pizza account is awesome. I really, oh, I really thank enjoy you. it. No, you're welcome. Yeah. You. I really like the. You know, when I look at your pizza, I can see how wet it is. I can see how kind of wild it is. Mm -hmm. I like that none of the pizzas are ever perfectly round. There's lots of bubbles and a lot of beautiful uh, shades of brown. I always say that I always want at least three shades of brown in my pizza. Oh, okay. You know, and, yeah, it makes uh, sense. Yeah, because there's flavor and texture and color and aroma there. So, for me, I I love the round pizzas you're doing, and I definitely want to start with that. No, and no, I know what you mean by looking at. It. I mean, I could actually point out photos too that I'm not happy about. I'm sure. Where the dough is not a hundred percent ready. Yeah. So basically, I mean, we take the dough out of the fridge at 10 a.m. So depending on what time of the year it is, I have to keep that dough in different locations at a restaurant. So right now I have my dough stacked behind the bar area, which that area right now is around 80 degrees. Yeah. And that dough we pull out at 10 a.m. and we're baking at 5 p.m. Yeah. So and then even at 5 p.m., we're constantly rotating the dough throughout the night to have it ready. And sometimes at 5 p.m. it's perfect, ready to go. And sometimes 6 p.m. is that perfect hour. Yeah. So, you know, it all depends. Yeah. But sometimes, I really, I, sorry, go ahead, Atilio. Yeah, so sometimes you see the, uh, the photos I, I post on Instagram. Sometimes I'm shooting those photos at like 4 o'clock. So the dough isn't 100% ready yet. Yeah. So there's one dough on there, Pizza by Atilio. You'll see I did a pie with Calabrian chilies. Yeah. I hate that photo. <laughs> Absolutely hate I'm thinking about deleting it. How oh, come? I shot the photo early and the dough was not ready. Why don't you make a comment that the dough's not ready so we can learn yeah. from that? I'm going to comment on that today just so everybody can see what I'm Good. talking about. You can see Good. the example. Yes. Let them know that you're considering uh, deleting it and that they should yep. look at it for all yep. of its uh, unique flaws. And then it's, yep. it's going, going, gone. That, that's all good. That's fine. Oh, yep, I'll do that. So one of the things I just want to comment on that I like is that what you're doing is a classic bakery technique. And I don't know if you, if you started doing that when you were making bagels, but I know when I've worked in bakeries and trained in bakeries, we're moving dough all around because you okay. really want to nail that level of fermentation yeah, and sure. also the temperature, which is super important. And to be honest, that's another thing that I admire that you're doing. And I'm not just saying that because we're doing a class together, but you know, you, you talked about uh, when I actually invited you to come into one of my my advanced classes and just like you know comment and, and talk to people and you were talking about working with really warm dough right can, can you tell people uh, about like that philosophy or that that way of working and why, why you do it oh Oof. it's night and day night and day i mean if, if you pull out a you go i would say a lot of the average pizzerias they're working with cold dough if you work with cold dough you're going to end up with a dense crust so i mean especially with the dough that i work with if my dough is at 75 degrees, it cooks like shit. I like my dough to be at roughly around 81 to 83 degrees before I start baking. And it just comes out perfect. It's, it's a lot harder to work with. It's harder to pull out of the dough tray. But it's just you get way better results out of it. And that, to me, what, you know, what it's all about. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to push out a shit product. I really not. Clearly. No. Clearly. So let's see, I'm looking at my calendar right now. And so I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get you on uh, on the 25th. And that's going to be the week after Kelly Bone. That's going to be in three weeks on a Sunday. And I think I'm going to call that that weekend Jersey Boys because I got okay. Dan Richer from Ratsa and I got you there. He's going to be on Saturday and you're going to be on Sunday. Perfect. So that's going to be that's going to probably be a three and a half or a four hour class. 
So what I would like to do there is we'll, we'll, we'll give people a recipe. It'll be similar to what you're doing. We're going to blend flours. We're going to go, you know, low to mid seventies on the hydration. And we'll ask people to make the, the dough in advance of class so that we can all bake together. Okay. And that's one of the big differences uh, between this new generation of classes and the old one. Uh, the old one in the beginner class, we had a two part version, make dough one day and bake the next. But right now, or at least up until now, the intermediate and the advanced were just single uh, four-hour seminars where we make dough and we, we go deep on, on dough making and fermentation. But in these part two intermediate and advanced classes, I want people to make the dough in advance of the class so we can all bake together. And okay. then in our class, I want to actually make the dough. Uh, you're going to be in your pizzeria. You've got an old 80-quart Hobart, right? Correct. So you're going to make it in that. We'll be at home in our kitchen aids making dough with you. Uh, and then we want to see everything. We want to see how you mix the dough. We want to see how it feels, how it looks. And okay. then for the second part of the class, uh, what I would love to do is make pizza with you, right? Okay. So you'll have your dough that's been, you know, kind of like expertly fermented, moved around, right? And then you'll, you'll show us what you like, what you don't like. I have like. to come in extra early that day just to get it ready. I got to play the clock like I normally would. So. <laughs> oh, well... Not 3 a.m., I hope. But I will get in early. I can't, I can't come <laughs> on the Zoom class and make a shit pizza. It ain't happening. I know. I know. Believe me. I, I keep pretty, pretty crazy hours, too. So thank okay. you for that. I appreciate it. And what I can do is, too, I mean, I do throw an auto ease on my dough. So during that little period, if you like, I could also show everyone how I feed the starter as well. Yes, that would be awesome. So I, have, I, I also have a small 20-quart mixer as well, and I'll feed the starter in that. I just give it a light, quick mix. That's all. It's nothing Perfect. crazy. Perfect. So one of the things I'm going to need from you is I'm going to need a starter recipe. And I know we kind of went over it already, but okay. I want to get, I want to get the registration for this class live this week. That's fine. So, um, uh, I'll, I'll put a link to it, uh, on my, uh, on my calendar and then I'll let, okay. I'll let people know on Instagram when it's live so they can sign up. That's fine. That sounds awesome. Sounds great, guys. You know, I just want to jump in here. All this stuff is really exciting to me. I love the idea, like getting in that bake, mixing up the flowers, doing some starters, getting those times and temperatures down, you know, all that stuff, you know, really speak like, you know, we joke about that kind of pizza frequency, but it's something that all, like vibrates inside us and it draws us all together. So I, I love yeah, of course. it. Um, uh, Atilio, you got a couple questions here. How mature is the starter that you like to use? What was the question again? It broke up. Sure. How mature is the starter that you like to use? How mature? Well, the starter right now is currently three years old. Three years? Yes. Now, did you always use that one or did you, you, you switch to like, you know, how did that work? How did five? Um, I would say the same starter, I would say I fed it differently throughout the years. So in the beginning, I was feeding it or it's, I always use an organic flour. Um, in the beginning, I was feeding it uh, rye flour. And there were times where I went from the half white bread flour. And then I decided one time when I was in the beginning, when I first opened the restaurant, I decided to feed it with organic all purpose flour. And I did not like the results. It just, it, 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 didn't just, it, it takes a lot to actually kill a starter, but it just, it really weakened it. Right. And then I had to bring it back to life. You start, I would feed it multiple times in a day with the half white bread flour. And it comes back to life real quick as well. So I'm, I'm happy with the results with the half white bread flour. It's not overpowering and it works well. It's got a lot of nutrients. So to me, it's important to use a high quality flour for your starter. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think, I mean, I, what, what Noel and I often talk about is the foundation, you know, and Correct. make a solid foundation that you can build upon, whether it's pizza or relationships or anything in life. And if you use good quality sourced ingredients, like you said, I love the idea of, uh, you know, the, the newer freshly milled flowers that is going to translate into what your people are eating, you know, and yeah, of course. Them, we want to feed them as much, as much quality. And like you would put love in there, basically. I would That's love great. to take it to the next level someday and mill my own grains. Yeah. Yeah. Something I'd like to do down the road. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't do it for every single recipe. It depends how much time you have on your hand. Oh, and how no, much but how much money you got to spend too. Yeah, exactly. That too. But, um, you know, I, I wouldn't mind milling some grain myself and maybe doing it for a bread recipe or maybe feature 
a specific dough recipe as a special for the evening, yeah. you know, stuff like that. But yeah, it's a lot of work. I love that. Sure is. Atilio, do me a favor. I got two yes. more questions. I just want to uh, feed you real quick, and then we're going to bring our next guest on. Okay. So, uh, Giovanni was asking about uh, temperatures. Like, for instance, what is your oven temperature? I cook at between the range. So it depends if I'm busy or slow. On a Friday night and Saturday night, I'm working with a higher temp. Yeah. And on, I would say the rest of the week, I'm, I'm working like tw- so I would say I'd bake off the other nights throughout the week at 700 degrees on a Friday and Saturday. I'm at 720. I am awesome. not a Neop- so yeah, I am not a Neapolitan pizzeria. Yeah. I'm somewhere in between New York style and Neapolitan. I don't know what to call myself, but I'm somewhere in the middle. So I and I bake off my pies take about three three and a half minutes to bake. For me, you're doing Central Jersey style neo artisan. Okay, sounds good to me. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. No. Yeah, all right. Like Scott it. Wiener would be mad at me for saying that. I always say, hey, have you checked out Philly style? He's like, there's no Philly style. I'm like, oh, really? I thought I, I, thought I, I, I discovered a new style, hashtag Columbusing. Uh, Angelo's Pizza was good. I was great, right? That, was, that, that guy, was I'm going to get him on. He's the only guy, on. with a, he's the right only now, guy who curses good. more than you on Zoom. I was very impressed. I really oh, was. I love that guy. Oh, do I love him. I was impressed. Right? Very good pie. Yes. Yeah. How did you hear about that guy? Through you. Really? Yeah. You Man. brought it up to me, and then I followed him on Instagram, and I said to myself, next time I get out to Philly, I love Philly. Yeah, great yeah, city, a lot sure. of good restaurants. Um, yeah. I went out there and get a long wait, and a bunch of funny guys there. And I a bunch of funny myself, guys, right? Yep. And I was going around just trying out a bunch of different pizzerias. So I bought Best. a whole pie. I ate two slices, and I'm like, "Shit! I wish I wasn't trying out today." I would, I would have, <laughs> forget it. I would have destroyed that pie. <laughs> forget in it. Three minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, one more question, then we're gonna go on yeah. to Inez. And so we'll cover this in class. But somebody's asking about how are you balling the high hydration dough? I heard we, we, we definitely want you to uh, ball some dough for us so we can see your yeah. technique. I Do you have any flour. tips? A lot of. Um, that flour so for me i work whether it's high hydration or low hydration i work off the table i um to me it's the easiest way i don't work in midair so whether it's 90 percent hydration or 70 percent hydration i'm working off of a stainless steel table great and i i don't put any flour down nothing so my pizza dough recipe does have olive oil on it so it naturally glides off the table really easily really? and um i also wear rubber gloves and I okay, can't. I can't wait to see this. Yeah. So Justin, I put gloves. rubber gloves on the list. Okay. Yeah. So rubber gloves I use, and I would say I would say about every fifteen dough balls, roughly, I'm changing out the gloves. <laughs> because yeah, it's this a is mess. definitely it's Central Jersey pie. Place. There's no no two ways about it. Justin, call Scott Wiener and tell him he's wrong again. Tell him. <laughs> tell him he's wrong. We just discovered a new pizza. Hashtag Columbus. I'm staying out of it. I'm no, no, no. We're, I'm, I'm starting. I'm start. I'm starting up. I, I just can't take it anymore. There you go. Um, all right. Well, yeah. hold on. Hold on one second. Let me show you the dinosaur. Yeah, let's see the dinosaur, please. I know exactly what he's showing us right now. How do I flip the screen on here? Don't worry about it. Just, just show us the dinosaur. <laughs> we got to get in there. She's a busy girl. There's the dinosaur. Wow, it looks good. You, you wait. That's not an old Hobart. It looks brand new. Oh no, that's from that's from the 1940s. It's all stainless you, steel. How did you? It came out of so a hospital. How, oh no wonder. It's yeah. it, it's immaculate. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's literally from the 1940s. 1940s. Yes. And it's oh, all stainless. Really? Oh my God, those are the best. I've never seen. It looks brand new. Now hold on. Hold on. I'm holding. Through the room. Let me see. Let me see. I'm so, see why I like this guy, Justin? He's my he's my boy. Wait, can we see it or no? 71. 71. Right? Perfect. 71. Perfect. Wow. Yeah. Atilio, I'm super excited to be doing classes with you. No, same uh, here. Uh, also, one of the things I want you to get into in the third part of class, I like okay. the way that you're sourcing local ingredients. And I know that it, it's almost a cliche at this point, but you do it. You're not doing it to be like farm to table or chefy. You're doing it because that's what you think makes the best pizza, right? 
Yeah, for, yeah. Well, you know, sure. Why not? I want to use good ingredients. You know, it, it's to me if if it's I don't know if you want it to be like uh, I don't want to use that word. I was about to say something bad, but don't um, say something bad. Yeah, I was gonna say something bad, but <laughs> you should take pride in what you do. Yes, it, you know it's yes. I put it. I, I don't want to be a pig in the industry. If I was, I was. I would buy thirteen dollar bags of fifty. You know, my flour cost me fifty five dollars a bag. <laughs> not thirteen no. dollars a bag. I know. You know, know. so <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny. Somebody got on uh, one of my Instagram posts, and I, I thought it was a joke at first, but I actually read it twice, and I think it's not. He was saying he's a truck driver in New Jersey, and he okay. loves your pizza. You know, and I'm thinking like, all right, truck drivers, they, I mean, I don't, I don't even know what stereotype is going to, I try to stay away from it, but like, let me get this straight. So you're <laughs> serving $55 a bag flour to truck drivers who would be happy probably with $13 flour. Mm -hmm. You got to charge them a reasonable price, right? But you're, you know you're, what it is, though, too? I mean, you could still make a really nice product with a $13 bag of flour, but you won't have that same flavor. No, no, it won't no. smell the same. The no. flavor is there. It really is. It's, it I is know. a big difference. Here's All right. Difference. I, we we got to end this pizza love yep. fest now yep. because we'll keep going. And I know yep. we got to get other guests on. So I'm really looking forward to working with you. Same let's here. get let's get the recipe down so we can get the class okay. registration live. Atilio, you thank you for being with us. I know you, you have a lot going thank on you. there. So keep up the good work. And uh, thanks again. We love you. Perfect. Thank you. Thank Bye, you, Atilio. brother. Thank you. I had I had to end it. I had to end it. I could go on forever. No, I could go on with everybody. Kelly, Inez. It's breaking my heart that we, uh, you know, we have to do such things. I know. So, uh, why don't we? I mean, that's awesome. I mean, I just, I just, you know, uh, let's get let's get geeky on the doji dough. Let's bring let's bring Inez on. Inez, you getting the blue bell of pizza, Inez? Yes. Where's Inez? She was on from the beginning. She's here. She's here. We just. She's needed... taking a break. Where is she? video let's get this party started yeah hey, Inez what's going on I was gonna ask you the same question happy Saturday I guess it's Saturday I have to look at my calendar Saturday whoa yeah. wait, wait hold on what's up with that little uh what's up with that pizza board in the back there I thought it would be like a nice backdrop uh conversation piece you know? wait a minute that's very Hans Fama style is it not Totally inspired by Hans Fama and also Felix, which they also have a beautiful right display, display board. Right, um, beautiful. Yeah, it took me like a year to put up because um, I it just it was one of those to do things that I was like, oh, that's such a nice thing to have in your kitchen and like. But anyways, I recommend it to everybody because it's just like inspiring and awesome really but it it just takes a matter of doing which i had my i forced my husband to do it uh not to make male and female stereotypes but you know it, it took two it took two of us so um it was all good all good yeah. so so what brings you to our little zoom class today so, um, yeah, so I'm here to talk about um, pop-up worlds, and hopefully a lot of you guys are doing pop-ups right now, and I think there's, um, so basically, all of last year, I was doing um, pizza pop-ups at, and private events and catering, and building my brand, and, you know, basically figuring it all out, um, and testing at, you know, from, like, a dive bar, my favorite dive bar, which, like, you know, people weren't crazy about fancy pizza there, but it was a great place to test out, to, like, a very beautiful foodie wine bar, uh, Melody on the east side, which was, like, now, you know, full of just awesome, some of the best chefs, um, I feel very thankful to, like, have been, offered a place there and then and can show another wine bar and and uh and then i've just done different kinds of private events collaborated with other chefs other pizza makers um and and i think it's uh it's been awesome to see all of like during the quarantine all the different pop-up businesses that are coming up right now um and it's exciting. And I, I definitely get super inspired by, um, from people that have, uh, pizzerias, restaurants to people that actually 
have their own pizza pop-ups too. And like, there's just such a, it's an exciting time for creativity, both in business and in food, essentially. Absolutely. So, so one of the reasons I wanted to do a class with you, uh, well, number one, I like working with you and uh, I love the pizza that you make. Um, but also, you know, here's the thing. I, I, was, I was saying this to Justin earlier. Um, I take these polls during class to find out who people are and, and where they're at. And one of, the, one of the things that I noticed pretty early on, like literally back in April, was that in some of these free webinars and classes, as much as 50% of the people are in between uh, home bakers and professionals. And they're what I call like aspiring professionals. And so they've got uh, a rock box, right? Or they've got an uni and they're trying to perfect their dough and they're trying to get their fermentation schedule down and get it all dialed in so they can take their act on the road and, and turn, you know, a hobby into a, a profession and maybe have a second career, right? And because of all these awesome little ovens that you can buy now and how affordable they are and how portable they are, it's like there's a whole new generation of do-it-yourself, you know, pizza makers that are actually turning out pretty awesome products so i thought you you were one of the first people that i knew that was actually doing it and i know that obviously we've worked together and you put two rock boxes in the back of your car they fit perfectly you fill up the rest of your car with all your toppings and all your dough and you hit the road right yeah yeah and i actually i just got a new car um because i drove my other car like just just drove it down but i had a i was working with my uh the car that i came out to la in which was my grandmother's mazda protege 98 um and that thing was like a it was just purring like a hummer and i would pack it to the brim with super hot ovens and like to all different types of ingredients and pizza boxes and and i mean i think like i'm thankful that that was that was my first car uh i'm thankful that i just like didn't really know any better and just shoved it full of stuff because I think it's a good learning experience as well of like use what you have yes. and then slowly invest when it's like the proper time or you break your car eventually uh, oh or your car God. breaks oh on God. you. But um, yeah. That thing was like a pizza low rider. I feel like the two big <laughs> ovens in the back like made the back go down a little bit, right? And it was yeah. like you'd show up and I was like, whoa, there she is. <laughs> That car, I mean, the fact that it was your grandmother's car just makes you more of a hero to me because remember we did that celebrity wedding and you had to drive, we had to drive up that crazy hill and park oh at that God. ridiculous angle. Your, your car looked crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, it was wild. And like, I know there's, there's been like, it's been funny to bring that place to like the celebrity types where you do those private events because then yeah. if they have security, they're like, um you don't mind if you just park down block, do you? Like, that's okay, right? I'm like, why? What do you mean? And I've got my 300 turbo diesel Mercedes, right, that I can, I can cater a party for 100 out of that thing. Yeah. I can put four dead bodies in the trunk without any of them even touching, right? Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. I mean, and so I think it's like a good point of, you know, use what you have, especially when you're experimenting with business, especially when you're launching a business, whether it's going to be your part-time job, your side hustle, or your full-time, I think like there's a lot of investments that we need to make. And I think it's so important to start small and the smaller you start, the more creative you can be, which in the end will make your business better eventually. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, and you know, you, you get some street cred, I would think too, hopefully. So. I don't know. I mean, I have the same problem where I go to these fancy houses and I pull up in my car. I try to wash it, but if I don't, then it's even worse because I live by the beach and, you know, it gets like that, that, that beautiful ocean coating on it from all the foggy mornings. And I show up and people are like, who the heck yeah, is this? This is LA. This is LA, no. I know, right? <laughs> uh, but you know what? I, I mean, I'm there three hours before any guests arrive, and I'm parked way down the block. But my car, like, I can, I can haul so much stuff in that car. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think that's, that's, again, just that's the way to do it. And, and remember that, like, your, your attitude and your pizza speak on behalf of yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. like, 
that there's just ways to do it where no one really cares at the end of the day, like no, no, no. what you're driving or, no. you know, even though your Mercedes is awesome and I love it. Thank you. 1983. No, I think it's, a, what is it? oh yeah, 85 turbo diesel, 300, five cylinder. But let's not talk anymore about cars. I want to actually get back to you because I, I want people to understand your journey and starting in Italy and then Soto and then pop up. So do me a favor, just kind of take everybody through your pizza journey, what you were doing, starting with what you were doing before you started making pizza. Yeah. So uh, before I was making pizza, I was following another dream, which was the film and TV world. Um, and I had studied film in school and I went to New York to try to follow that dream. I ended up um, working on a TV show for several years that would take me around the world. Um, and then I was like, kept while I was traveling, I just kept falling in love with different food cultures and entrepreneurs, both old and young in all of these different countries. And um, I loved that everybody's like favorite food together was pizza and just like the casualness of it and the camaraderie, but also the rivalry at the same time of like entitlement to whose pizza is who, what everyone thinks pizza is the best pizza. Um, I love the controversy, but so anyway, so I kept, well, I moved out to LA eventually. I was working at a production company in an office. Um, I, just came up with this idea where I wanted to do, a, strangely, uh, pizza kits, which is what I'm doing now and I was able to launch this year because of COVID. Um, so I wanted to do do-it-yourself pizza kits to bring everybody together, like from the chef who is super busy that doesn't have time maybe to make dough to the first beginner cook who's a little bit timid in the kitchen, but they're familiar with pizza. So maybe they'll take a stab at, you know, the as we all know, probably here, the enjoyment of making dough. Um, and so I finally, I quit my job. I went to pull the master of none, went to pizza school in Naples. Um, I was there for about a month uh, at the Associone Vera Pizza Napoletana. Um, and that was awesome. It so much tried basically as many different pizzerias as we could, could eat in Naples and then um, was learning under the traditional pizza all those. And, uh, and then I moved back or came back to LA, started working at Soto, which in my opinion, when I first came out to LA from New York, I was in love with their, you know, kind of charcoaly outside crust, uh, the Neo Neapolitan, as we mentioned before, or you guys mentioned before, um, leopard spotting crust and obviously they did beautiful pastas. And so they luckily, like I had staged apprenticed at Soto um, when I was still working in the, in the film business. Um, and so they kind of like, because I had gone to pizza school and had put in my time with them staging, they're like, all right, you know what? We're going to throw you in the line of fire and you're going to run the pizza station by yourself. Um, and so <laughs> I was like, okay, like first time working um, in a restaurant kitchen, and uh, and it was it was such a great learning experience. I would say any of anybody trying to um, either start a pizzeria or start to do pop up, I think what advice was given to me was was like you know spend th at least three months working in a pizzeria or a restaurant just to like know if that's what you want. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah, so I, I can't tell you how much I learned in those three months. I worked my butt off, um, and had my butt handed to me. Um, and, and then after that, I was like, all right, there's this, this cool thing happening in Copenhagen. Um, and I really want to go stage an apprentice with this restaurant group over there. Um, they're, they're called the restaurant relay group. If some of you have watched, uh, I think, uh, was it on ugly delicious, the based, um, Christian Puglisi did, uh, based has done based relay farm of ideas. They have like this crazy pizza restaurant where they make their own charcuterie in house and they make their, um, sourdough pizza. And then they get everything from their organic farm. And then, like whatever's left over gets put into their 
fine dining restaurant and then they also have a bakery and a vegetable focused tartare place anyways some of the it was copenhagen if we ever get to travel again fingers crossed um for all of you interested in food uh i would recommend going there and doing an apprenticeship as well or just eating because you have people from all over the world as well that are some of the best chefs and just curious and hungry to learn um, and teach. And it's just a very exciting place. Um, so I would love to spend more time there. Um, but anyway, so I did that for a month um, and then came back and kind of started figuring out what was the best approach to launch this pizza kit business. And I thought that maybe just doing, you know, I don't have a name in the food industry. I haven't worked a long time in the restaurant industry. Um, I wish that I had, but I don't regret my film experience too. And I was just hungry to start something. And while I wanted to, there's so much that you can continue learning and not stop learning. I just, I just wanted to go. And maybe that's what some of you, some what other people feel as well um, of you just in this exciting time, like just, just go, just push your product out there, push yourself out there, and then you'll slowly get better. But if we just keep waiting and keep waiting and keep waiting, sometimes you'll get more afraid to do the like initial launch. So I think I have so much to learn uh, myself still as, as we all do, but, um, and I want to learn so much um, from masters like Noel and, um, and, and Attilio and, uh, and Kelly, um, they sound so excited. I want to take their classes. It sounds awesome. Um, but I think like what other, what some of my favorite advice has just been like, you know, you can learn to be, the best bread maker, the best pizza maker, you know, and put in your time of mastering those hours. But if you don't just, if you just launch your business and just test it out and see what works, you know, that will maybe go faster and then hone in on your skills. So um, that's kind of the model that I'm using, especially in this crazy time and um, last year and this year and this crazy economy of like, what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. Oh, opening a restaurant is scary right now. Um, props to everyone doing it. You're going to kill it. Just keep hustling. Um, I will eat there. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of, that's kind of, and so our, sorry, this year um, I had like a big month planned. Actually, Noel, I was going to go to the pizza expo with you and um, participate with some events that you were hosting and um, if I'm sure everybody here knows what the pizza expo is but if they don't it's the the basically the world pizza expo in Las Vegas hopefully they'll do it again someday um, it's awesome if anybody gets a chance to go should 100% go um, and uh, so anyways had a big really really busy month planned for uh, following the pizza expo with you know like different events and also another advice is just saying yes to everything and then figuring it out afterwards right. um, unless you really can't do it then don't hurt yourself and hurt your brand um, but you can say no after I, I have a question I feel like um, I, uh, I, I think I understand your history when did you personally finally take the plunge and start doing pop-ups um, so I think it was, what is time anymore? I'm trying to remember. Uh, I think it was January of 2019, January of 2019. Not that long um, ago. Not that long ago. Yeah. Um, and I, there was like this, I didn't want to go somewhere. I, I know a lot of people are doing it out of their house and I think that's awesome. Um, I didn't want just everyone to know where I live. So I personally just wanted to do it still kind of secret. Um, but uh, so I chose this, this awesome dive bar in Culver city. If any, if anybody's familiar um, called the Mandrake bar and they had a back patio 
where everybody smokes cigarettes outside and, uh, you know, right next to the pizza, which, you know, in Naples, it makes pizza taste better, obviously, because everybody in Naples smokes cigarettes. Um, so, but yeah, it was, it was really, it was a great place to like kind of be secret and really just test out. I had, they had two tables there. I brought the Gosney rock boxes, um, used my network of friends and then just, just the local bar goers that would come and have pizza. And, um, and then, yeah, so I would do that every Wednesday. Um, and just try, I did like a classic margarita. I, you, I did three pizzas. I did classic margarita, like the, you know, the pepperoni and honey, which everybody loves. And then um, I always did like a fun, very, very creative pizza that would just like either test, push the limits of people. So I used like, I went to Mexico City and I brought back some um, crickets. And so I did like, a, I, said, I called it a chapulines fuego, which is like means crickets in, in Spanish. Um, actually, that might not be the direct translation, so I apologize, Spanish. But it, basically they are crickets. I think it's crickets or, Noel, where's your wife? <laughs> She's doing her own Zoom session in her office. <laughs> okay. But um, so, so anyway, so it was, a, it was a crickets pizza and it was, I used like Oaxacan cheese and uh, crickets that were crumbled up. So it was a little bit, people were introduced to it and excited by it, but, um, you couldn't actually see the physical crickets, which I think freaks out a lot of people. Um, but anyways, that was just an example of like messing with fun flavors and like seeing what would click. And, and it was, it was super fun because you'd have a lot of repeat customers that some people were just like classic margarita, you know, die hard. That's all I want. Whereas other people were like, I always want the adventurous one. I always want to try it. And so it was fun, like building that rapport with, uh, different customers. Um, awesome. and that is an important thing as well, obviously. So, you know, what's so interesting to me is that I, I, I mean, I, I work a lot. These zoom classes have opened up kind of a new world to me because there were all those people that wanted to come to my classes, but either it was, they had to travel too far or they couldn't afford it or whatever it was. Uh, now I'm able to, they're able to come to my classes. They're more accessible because they're online. And then what I often do is like an hour or two of consulting with them to help them dial in their, their pizza. But what I'm hoping to do with you is avoid that whole hour or two and like do classes for people. So I think it's not just one thing that people need to learn. It's so many different things that you're doing to make a successful, not just one pop-up, but you've turned one pop-up in Culver City into a, into a career, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and even though you started by this, with this idea of like do-it-yourself dough kits, that actually was kind of part two of your career, right? Because the pop-ups ended up coming up first and then you kind of went back to that during COVID and now you have two small businesses that are both flourishing, right? Yeah, totally. Uh -huh. So um, for me, you know, I, I think that I'm sorry to interrupt you, Nez, but for me, one of the things that one of the reasons I want to work with you is that you have real world experience, right? You didn't start out in pizza, and you have made it work with a combination of social media and just old fashioned networking and being friendly with people. But also you've got your pizza dialed in. You did your homework. You went to Naples, right? You've worked with chefs. You've staged. I mean, uh, 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 Soto is one of L.A.'s was one of L.A.'s best restaurants. And Steve Sampson is one of L.A.'s best chefs. And so I think it's really cool. I, I kind of went through the same path or went down the same path working with chefs and staging and working on the line for a couple of years and then started doing my own thing. So I, I feel like because we have that structure and I don't know about you, but I can still hear Chef Ori from Bestia screaming at me, right? I still am motivated by a certain amount of fear and also being slammed on the line, right? With tickets down the rail and you're like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this and learning to get over that hump that allows you to be a better professional right? And you have that drive and that technique in your background. And you're pumping out restaurant quality pizza in a small environment, right? How many pizzas do you do on a busy night? Um, I would say a hundred. I mean, on a busy, busy, a hundred. Um, but awesome. that's, you know, a busy, busy. Yeah. I know. Um, I know. 
But yeah. that's awesome. And, you know, uh, if people want to look at your Instagram, there's a lot of beautiful pizzas there, right? A lot of beautiful pizzas. Thank you. You're welcome. So I think it'll be interesting for us to do some classes. I know that Uni is going to want to get involved, and I know Rockbox has expressed interest as well. So I'm hoping to get, uh, you know, one class up and running. We don't have a date yet, but we'll be posting that soon where people can bring whatever ovens they've got, and we'll all kind of make pizza together. You'll give us like a starter recipe, right? Yep. And so, you know, maybe some, it'll be a combination of things. I, this class is going to be like a work in progress, and that's kind of what I'm looking forward to. Right. And so we're going to have to spend some time maybe on the phone this week or maybe we'll do a little uh, a little social distancing, uh, a happy hour on the, on the beach. Maybe we can finally get Justin to come out. Yeah. Justin, he social distances <laughs> with himself in Venice. That's what he does. I'm the best. You see me on the beach. I went swimming in the ocean. On <laughs> you did not. Yeah, it was so delicious, man. The ocean felt so good on Thursday. We were out oh, yeah. tell anybody we were cracking some, some CLs on the beach. You don't have to look over your shoulder anymore, Justin. You're allowed to crack CLs on the beach now. Oh, thank the, thank <laughs> the gods. You are. You are. Um, I, I, I want to I just jump in here. I know, yeah. I know at time is, um, is, uh, is, is time, time keeps slipping into the future. But we do have some questions for you. And as, let me just say, it is beautiful to see you again uh, as someone that I've hung out with part prepped with and uh, pizza pied with. It's always good to see uh, not only our neighbor, but uh, you know, our kindred spirit in pizza pie. So it's great to see you. And I'm glad, glad to hear that everything is a rocking and a rolling, so to speak. So um, question that I've often wondered uh, at looking at your keychains: why the Lupacota, the cooked wolf? Is that what people are asking? Giovanni is asking. Yeah. Um, so Lupacota, um, I, so basically when I was first, one of my trips to Italy, I first found about, out about the um, power of Lupa, um, which is the she-wolf, uh, and it is a symbol of, in Rome, that she, like, saved, I always butcher this, Romulus and... Remus, right? Uh, yep, yeah, exactly. Um, and basically mothered them back to uh, health, the founders of Rome. And, uh, but I, when we first went to Siena, Italy, I don't know if anybody's familiar, um, basically they were doing this awesome med medieval horse race. Um, and where they, they basically have a horse race in a piazza that is just, just imagine all of the different neighborhoods in this medieval town that, you know, you have some people that used to be the bakers, the sewers, the fishermen, um, and they all have these amazing dinners and then race against each other. Um, but so, so basically when we were traveling, I picked a neighborhood, my husband picked a neighborhood, I picked the she-wolf, the Lupa neighborhood, um, and fell in love with that symbol. And, um, so I, so there we go. Yep, exactly. <laughs> um, and, uh, so I also, when I first fell in love with the food world, I, there's a book called How to Cook a Wolf by MFK Fisher which was written um, in around World War II when there were all these food shortages. Um, and, and it was basically how she was saying, you can use whatever you have to create something, something delicious and something good. We don't need all the newest technologies to be the best. Um, so going in spirit of how to cook a wolf and the power of the lupa, I was like, all right, I want to incorporate whatever that means in my name or part of my business. Um, and uh, I also love ricotta, which I always, or ricotta, I always say ricotta wrong. It's ricotta, ricotta. Um, I think I say it wrong in English and Italian, but um, I wanted something easy for Americans to say. Um, so I decided like, you know, I love, love being a lover. One of my favorite cheeses being ricotta. Um, I wanted to combine the two and do like the cooked wolf because, you know, flames, pizza, she wolf. So it was kind of a, that's a long way description of the name. That's exactly what people are asking for. I got a couple more. So just stand by. Okay. So uh, I think we already went over this on a good night. You were probably uh, kicking out a hundred pies at the Mandrake. Uh, like on a bad night, what was, what was your... On a bad night, I mean, God, like 10, Yeah. you know, you can have, I mean, and that's the thing, that's what's so good about pop-ups and building 
what 2020's favorite word is resilience um is like i think it's it's you need to realize that like you're not always gonna be planning yeah exactly and like it's okay but like you know showing your face putting your time in and then it's it's just it's good to know both you know um, I think that, I mean, and this leads me to another question. You don't know if you're going to sell a hundred pizzas or you're going to sell 10. However, you're still probably doing prep and bringing everything for 100 pizzas in hopes of. Yeah. Well, it, it, I mean, it depends. It depends on what you're, I think for me right now, I'm not doing as, as, as those type of pop-ups anymore. For me, I'm doing actually all, pizza kits, which is all pre-order. Um, and I think that is a good method. I've seen a lot, a lot of other, uh, pizza pops do this where they're just doing pre-order and then they have like a certain amount that are, are good for walk-ups. But, um, I think that kind of gives you a ballpark on like how popular things are going to be that day. And I think also taking into account, like, what does your schedule look for? Like for that week, like if you think it's going to be slower on that day, you know, I may not bring as many doughs um, if I have a busier schedule. And if you sell out, then so be it. Right. I mean, that's, that's somebody, somebody else. I mean, because no, we all are pizza geeks. You know, we always talk about this, like prepping out, you know, do you do the prep at home? Somebody's talking about the cottage food, which is a little bit beyond me. Uh, you know, do you need a commercial kitchen? Can you prep it? at home and then how do you how like i remember when we took dough balls uh, when we did that pop-up we carried you know 80 pizza dough balls in the back of Knowles. he was talking about his tank um you know can we talk about the just between two of you guys dough management in a pop-up you know it's very difficult because when you you know the make to bake schedule when are those doughs going to be at their ripest point because that's when you want to be firing them and if you're driving them across la to go to somebody's house and they could have their ac could be blasting at 57 degrees and, or it could be a yeah. you know yeah. so this is so the more you do it guys the more adept you kind of get to playing within those variables we often say you know a recipe does not a pizza make but it's just uh, getting, getting those, those variables within the Pete's equation. And they have to do with temperatures of the room where you're storing the dough. Is it going to be ready in two hours? Is it going to be ready in four hours to bake, right? So how did you guys, I mean, what is your thought process a little bit on that? Yeah. Um, so I think uh, cottage food license is a great uh, working out of either, you know, a friend's restaurant kitchen, if you're doing a pop-up, if they have space, I think that's an awesome way. Hopefully they have a walk-in um, and that's a great place to store dough. Um, and then I think at the beginning, um, working prime, you know, at the beginning when I was working primarily from home and then you do have to figure out your dough management. Um, and especially like, you know, it's what, it's been a hundred degree weather in LA, like um, summertime is, has been, is a hard and important to factor in. So like, I think you really need to learn and take into account, like, where are you going? Where are you doing this pop-up? Do they have a uh, fridge space? And if not, how are you going to keep the dough cool? Um, one thing that I learned was using these cooler bags, or I learned the hard way, I should say, um, is using these cooler bags and just keeping it as, if it was going to be a hot day, just keeping it as cold as possible. And then bringing out your dough with enough time to like, let it get at room temperature or to your liking, essentially. Um, and then, but I've had, you know, many pop-ups where my dough is overproofed and you're like, oh shit. Um, you know, you have to deal with that. So, and then, you know, if you're, if you're taking an army of people, maybe putting it and you don't have like a big, nice, cool SUV, put, trying to figure out which car ha is the best for the dough. Um, and making sure that it's not slanted because I've had dough. I mean, I, I still have this happen to me and you have to be really smart about this and who's managing the dough. Yeah. Noel, you're awesome at repeating yourself still to this day, even to Justin and myself, who I think who have learned by now, you're like, how is the dough? How did you keep it straight? Like make sure you're only paying attention to the dough right now when you're carrying it out because you know, yeah, if, if maybe some of you guys have had this experience where it just smushes all to one side and then you have basically just one glob of dough 
super hard to work with. It is, if I remember correctly, those Hollywood Hills, you're going around those turns and that dough, as flat as it was from, uh, you know, uh, Santa Monica in, it gets a little dirty going up those hills. So, yeah. yeah. Um, have you ever, uh, have you ever messed with uh, cooking other flowers in your rock box? I know that you were kicking those two rock boxes, the green machines. Um, do you ever mess with like a half double zero, maybe a bread flower? You ever, um, uh, you know, do you keep it on full blast? People are asking about temps maybe in the rock box, what you like to yeah, um, I put it on full blast uh, to start, and then I'll, depending on, honestly, it just depends on the dough, um, and I think, like, as we all, as we all know or may have learned, temperature, there's so many different components of a dough, like, environmentally, um, and so I think, you know, testing out your first, your first, uh, mess up pizza, as I always like to say, um, you kind of go off of that, see how it turns out, or maybe your first couple of mess up pizzas. Um, and then you play with temperature. So after it's cranked up all the way, um, then sometimes I'll lower it, um, depending on what kind of appearance I want for the dough. So if I want that like high, you know, Neapolitan style with a big puffy crust. Uh, and I want to add, you know, a little bit of the char, then I'll just keep it at full blast. Or um, if I want to, you know, have kind of a, like, I'll lower the temperature, just keep it at a low temperature. If I want a little bit of a slower cooked, um, longer, less soft in the center crust, um, if that helps answer your question. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's the thing. I mean, it depends. It's very subjective. What are you looking for? You got to ride that dial. I mean, I do that with the uni. I started off on fire, but I got to turn it down because I don't want, I don't want one of my, my uh, Cornishonis to be, you know, just burnt to heck. While I'm yeah. To so uh, two other questions, guys. Guys, we are getting to about a quarter after 12. So we don't want to keep Inez forever here, although. Yes, we do. It's been great. <laughs> so, uh, how do you package your uh, pizza kits? Uh, in a uh, commissary kitchen. Okay, so you, you're using a commissary kitchen, but that's how prepping. They're asking, do you package your dough for your pizza kits in a 16-ounce container? I do, yes. Um, in a 16-ounce container, and then I'm also starting to vacu vacuum seal them as well. Are you free you're freezing them before you vacuum seal them? Um, yes, that's my preferred preferred way i've done it where where you don't pre-freeze them and vacuum seal then it's just like so you get pandas yeah <laughs> yeah that's so, you know we all yeah. have that question in class people are like well, how do you do this? i'm like as soon as you ball it put it on a tray put it in the freezer let it freeze the next day uh, use a vacuum sealer or if you don't get the old straw technique and just <laughs> ziplock baby not health department yeah. approved justin I don't, I, you know, I'm... Your breath especially goes both ways. I plead the seventh on that one. Okay, fine. As your attorney, yeah, yeah. I think we should have a plan B. Yeah, there we go. Guys, don't use the straw technique unless you're doing it for yourself. There you go. There we go. There we go. Um, all right. Well, uh, so we got to figure out some times that we're going to all play together. We got to figure out some times. We got to figure out what the, what the different courses are going to look like. Um, you know, we definitely want to bake. That's obviously something we want to do. Um, we will, we'll probably make dough together. And then I think I always have like three parts to every class. Right. And so if one part is making dough and the second part, uh, let's, say, let's say one part's making dough, second part is maybe balling dough or just dough, dough, dough. Second part, we'll definitely make pizza together. We'll all bring out our portable ovens or whatever we've got and make pizzas. And then, Inez, I want to come, I want to do like a third part. And the third part for me is really important because as important as pizza making is and dialing in your oven and your fermentation, you know, I noticed that you have several businesses in one. I started out line cooking after I ran and owned restaurants for years when I went back. And then from line cooking, I went to catering. And then from catering, I went to consulting and from culting, I went to teaching. And then now that I'm, now that it's COVID, I'm doing everything online, both consulting and teaching. So I feel like every business model, especially in 2020 needs a plan A, 
a plan B and a plan C. And as, and as soon as you launch plan B, you better get a plan D going because things are moving fast these days. And so I, re- I kind of want to get into, I wouldn't call it the business of pizza, but I think planning is really important. And if you are, if you have an opportunity as a, a pop-up person, you never know what's going to happen when you put your pizza out there, right? People are going to bring you opportunities and you need to be ready to take advantage of them. You need to be ready to scale up and scale down. You need to be able to pivot. So these are things I really want to cover too. And I, when I consult with people, we often get into conversations about business and money and plans. And a lot of what needs to happen is not just about what toppings you're using or what oven you're going to buy or how many pizzas you can make in a day. That's very short-sighted. You need to have a plan moving forward, just like a real business, right? A teeny bit of money in the bank doesn't hurt. But if you don't have any money, then you self-finance. I've been doing that since I was 25 years old. I opened my first bankrupt restaurant. I took over one. We had not enough money. So every, every, all the money we made in 12 hours in one week went to the next week. And we'd be closed for four days. And we'd be buying stuff on auction and reupholstering chairs ourselves and buying used equipment. And then we'd open up Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It was literally a pop-up. We were open from 10, 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We'd take all the money that we made that was left over. And we'd do Monday through Thursday. We'd just like rebuild our club. And we did this for almost nine months. It was super guerrilla style. So I started like that because I didn't, I didn't really have any investment. Investors, and that's kind of the way I do it to this day, right? All the money that we made with uh, with our live Zoom classes, we're pumping in the on-demand classes and beefing up our website and getting ready for 2.0 and working with people like you. So it's all guerrilla style. It's just me and Justin, right, Justin? That's true. <laughs> that's true. So anyway, I, I do think that the business of pizza is really important, whether you're making, you know, uh, 20 pizzas in a pop up or, or like you, your, your business is turning into a real business now, right? How many locations are you in? Um, I think five or six. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been it's been really great. I feel very lucky to be able to I think one thing exciting about the pizza world is that everyone kind of welcomes it, whether you're in pizza or you're not. And I've just been able to meet so many chefs and different uh, entrepreneurs uh, in business who have taught me so much. Um, and I'm very, very thankful to have them. And yeah. especially during this time and they're navigating, you know, keeping their restaurants open or their businesses open and, and, you know, we're figuring out how to work together and, and collaborate in fun ways. So yeah. it's, yeah. Um, and if you're in LA, I'm collaborating with a fun uh, female duo, uh, the Bad Jew, who does meat. Uh, she does pork strami and lamb strami, and we're doing hoagie sandwiches at Highly Likely on Wednesday. Um, really? That's not announced yet, but um, we're announcing it tomorrow. I like Highly Likely. Yeah, it's great. And Kat Turner is awesome chef as well. Wow. So. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. you know what? I like, I like this whole idea of everybody working together too. I feel like, I feel like I wouldn't be where I am if people didn't help me and let me stage and, and give me opportunities, even though I didn't have very much experience. And, you know, one of the things that's funny now is that a lot of the people who were successful by, by traditional standards are now struggling because of all their fixed costs, right? They've got rent to pay pretty high, of course, and all those other costs that come. But people like you, you really don't have any fixed costs. All of your costs are based on demand. And, and so you're, you're in a very unique position, you know, to, to really do what you want to do and take advantage of any situation that presents itself on any day or week. So, you know, you're in a lot of ways, you, Inez, you're at the forefront of what's going on in pizza right now. Um, I was looking at, sorry to do one more thing, then I'll let you jump in. I was looking at some of the stats that we collected through the polls and this class, I mean, it makes sense, but 75% of the people that are, that are, that are attending today are aspiring pizza makers. They're in between that, that, that home baker and, and professional. So for me, those are, those are our peeps, you know, you got to love chefs. You got to love home bakers, but those people in the middle, they're going to be the next generation of, of Ori's and, 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 and Steve Sampson's and, and, and Inez's and Knowles. And those are our peeps and Justin's Mr. Pizza Frequency over there. No, 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 no guys. No, no. (laughs) I'm just the handsome. 
Inez. I know. Inez, I'm sorry. Let me let me let you finish up, and then Justin's going to take us out, all right? I, you, I, I interrupted you. I apologize. I, I, I no, 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 no. I, I, was, I was probably just blabbering, um, most likely. <laughs> but, yes, no, I, I totally – just to continue what you were saying, yeah, I, I agree. I think it's – and I think it's awesome that there's so many cool – chefs coming out right now and it's so awesome and exciting to see just because I think we can all influence and inspire each other and push each other forward so um and I, honestly I like I, I I would say that a lot I hate Instagram in so many different ways I cannot tell you um but it also helps me stay motivated and like I'm like oh I want to try this new pizza yeah I want to try this new type of bread, I want to try this new method. And I think like, if we all encourage each other, we can all just create something awesome for our, that our own brands and our own ideas, essentially. So, yeah. I love you know, as I just dropped something in the chat right there, it was that it was that little piece that Eater did about you back in the day. I don't know if, if everybody saw that, but I thought that was pretty awesome because usually Eater just does stuff on uh, on people that are uh, have restaurants and openings and the way chefs are moving. But they actually featured you in a piece uh, on like, you know, the burgeoning pop up scene. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That was that was awesome. And that was actually the end of 2019. So it was it felt special because. I, I was afraid to try to uh, like approach and attract uh, press for a while. Um, I mean, obviously press is press and it's really nice, but like, no, but, it, but it's scary. Cause I think especially in the pop-up world and it's still, you know, you, you are doing a lot of things gorilla style. So you're not sure um, you, you, you don't want too many, you know, you don't want the wrong person to find out or either, you know, you want to invite people. So I think, it was super, it was awesome and super exciting. And, uh, and this is like people in the article as well. It, there's other pop-up pizza makers yeah, who are great. Um, and yeah, it was, it was very special. One of the things I'd love to do if you're, if you're up for it is besides featuring you, I'd love to bring in other people that can co-teach with us. And so there's so many things to learn about this new world. And I feel like, you know, when you started or when I started, there wasn't as much out there. There weren't as many resources, but if we can help people find resources, if we can bring oven companies together with people, or if we can teach people what we've learned, you know, so they can like skip all the many of the silly mistakes we made and, and get to that next level. I think it's, I think we are a great resource and so are the people that we know. Absolutely. All right. Excellent. Justin. Yes, thank you so much. It was wonderful to hang out with you. Noel, do you want to say anything? I've, I've got two questions here. Let me, let me just ask these questions here. So um, Brittany, Brittany has been very patient, but let me get this other one out of the way. Are we going to be putting these up for viewing on the interwebs? Thank you, Dan. And I specifically, I, I love your spelling of interwebs. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, besides being a handsome guy and a very knowledgeable pizza maker and co-host, is a is an excellent editor. So, Justin, as soon as you can get uh, this this webinar up, we will we'll put it on uh, on our YouTube. Hey, I just got my own uh, vanity URL on YouTube. Uh, I'm, so I'm not uh, YouTube forward slash one three seven A B D. No, now I'm uh, YouTube dot com forward slash Low Rise Pizza. What are the chances? Oh. Really? Yeah, I had to get to one hundred viewers. It took forever. <laughs> it didn't take that. Long. It took two weeks. No, it took me. It took me like four months. I'm still waiting, and I've been on there since it started. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, we're gonna get you there. We're, uh, we're gonna get you there. Gold. Got, got some gold in them. I mean. I'm not looking for viewers. I just, I just like to have a, a, a URL that is like, doesn't take like up my whole signature in my email. It's like, Brittany has a real question, Mr. Vanity URL. <laughs> Thank you, John. Uh, okay. So having, she said there, she's saying that she's having some trouble with proofing pizza dough. Okay. Using the oven with the light on only works sometimes. She's asking, is a proofing machine worth it. Well, Brittany, I would say get a proofing machine only if you want to do like mage volume, but we have a couple hacks. Um, take it out earlier. Don't proof in one hour, proof over four hours. Uh, get on a schedule that it's not necessarily the temperature, but it might be just the time that it takes. You know, um, I like to take my dough out between three to five hours before I'm baking it on the day. 
Uh, if I need to, uh, if I need to expedite that time, you know, I'll stick a couple jams just in the microwave, not no light on no, just the microwave seems to be a little warmer or what we do sometimes is no, we'll, we'll flop our, our doughs out into our pans, put it on the preheating oven for 10 minutes, you know, allow that heat to kind of start jamming it up. However, if you really want to get a proofing box, uh, what we recommend is going on face space, market space place, or, and, you know, any of the let goes and find somebody that has an old wine fridge that they're not using because an old wine fridge will enable you to maintain between 55 and 65 degrees where dough just loves to hang out. So those would be my tips. Noel, Inez, do you guys have anything you'd like to add for Brittany? I think a wine fridge is awesome if, if for, for more ways than one. Um, and ah! yeah, I would, I, I would, I would vote that if you have space for it. Um, Joel? No, no, all good. I don't generally proof dough unless I'm in a big hurry. So at the pizza expo is like the only time I ever proof dough because I don't have enough time to, and or enough space to let it rise at room temp. Plus the pizza expo in Vegas, like keep that place at like 59 degrees at nighttime. So you can't do anything at 59 degrees. It's just too cold. But uh, I mean, we've certainly used proofers in professional settings because of the time constraints and getting the dough correct for service. We certainly have, but it's not ideal. It's right. really not ideal. And it's not really even traditional for most pizza styles. Yeah. So don't, don't spend it. Get, get a wine fridge. Justin, you always say you can get them used. Where'd you say, on eBay or Craigslist? I'm saying, I said go to Let Go, go to Face Space Marketplace. I mean, you'll see, I mean, people, they, they get them because they think that they're going to drink that much wine, but then they like get on the wagon and then so they sit <laughs> in their garage. You know, Would you do me a favor, Justin? Will you put a couple of those links in the chat so that people will have those before we before they leave? Just one or two, please. You know, guys, I'm not going to do your homework for you. Uh. you gotta put your big your, your your big girl or boy or whoever apron on, and uh, go find it on the let goes. There's got to be go. within your community, or uh, you know, hey, uh, just like Zoom is to Skype, there's this thing I used to call Craigslist. Excellent. Thank you, Justin. Got it. You got it. That's what I'm here for. It's not just the good looks or the wish you were beer. <laughs> Although that is a big part of it. And the backgrounds. Right. Oh, man. You know, hey, schnozberries taste like schnozberries. And uh, pepperoni and cheese taste like pepperoni and cheese. I tell you what. We are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams, ladies and gentlemen. No. Say your goodbyes. I got to go. You know what? I have to consult for my brother-in-law now. Suddenly, Dr. Bob Feelgood wants to make sourdough pizza, and he has no idea what he's doing. So, Also, he's too lazy or too busy to take my classes, so he wants, like, home consulting. Well, I bet you better charge him. I, uh, char he doesn't get the friends and family discount. Not with no, he, he, he gets more than that. Oh, he gets more than that. I'm staying out of that one. Exactly. That one. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much. 1231 is the time. October 3rd, 132020 is the day. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with us. Hopefully we were able to answer everybody's questions. There don't seem to be any more questions in the Q&A. Hopefully we were able to uh, have some, some, some fun, some smiles. Ho hopefully we made you hungry, not only for literal pizza, but also, also what we're going to be doing and the, um, the classes that we're cooking up in the future. Uh, you can find Noel at Slow Rise Pizza. He loves to get overly DM'd. He really <laughs> loves that. So just DM the ship out of them. Me, I'm at that pizza frequency or at Justin Clark Dre. Um, and Inez, wh where, where are you? I'm at uh, Lupacota, uh, which I believe you put in the comments. L-U-P-A-C-O-T-T-A. -T -T -A. We're cooking those wolves and eating ricotta. Yes. Thank you guys for having me. Love it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Uh, guys, we're going to sign off. We love you. Keep baking. Remember, uh, if you fall down a little bit, it's A-OK, -okay, what Chris Bianco likes to say. If you burn, you learn. We, uh, we like to focus on the foundation dough of the dough. And if you have a solid, a solid foundation, you can build upon it just like anything in life. Uh, like we said before, we're not getting into the politics of pepperoni or pineapple. I will say this, this, though. Ladies and gentlemen, please stay safe, stay strong, belong with one another. The opposite of being short, because, hey, we all belong here together. And to be less divisive, pizza always, guys, even pineapple. 
and always pizza. Thank you guys so much. Hope to see everyone very soon. Thank you, Justin. Thank you, Inez. Thank you, Attilio. Thank you, Kelly Bone.